already whining about it. Damn. Everybody's whining. Okay. All right, start over. Welcome to Wine About It, episode two. Episode two. So far, so good. So far, it's the best podcast on Twitch. Easily, I'm in LA. I think we're the only podcast on Twitch. Scuff podcast. I forget, because I feel like Train never does that anymore. But I guess he did one last week. Um, well, great. Great new episode two. Episode two. Exciting news is Wine About It is now on Spotify and Apple Music. Pog, 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 pog. For the audio listeners, I am dabbing. Because I've decided it's funny in 2021. Wow, we have audio listeners. We have audio listeners that don't know that I ironically dab, and it's become unironic, because I think it's funny now. Um, so very cool. Wait, what were you doing? I flipped them off. Why? It was a secret. I'm out here being nice. The oh. lighting is weird. Can you shut the fuck up, Bernie? Just shut up. Shut up. This is not a good impression on our audio listeners. Sorry. <laughs> this is a bad start. Bernie, I think you should talk more. Is the lighting actually bad, Chad? Do we need to do something? I feel like it's the same. I think it's literally the same as last time. I think it's time. pretty similar. It's gotta be pretty close. We do have a cat this episode and a dog this episode. It's fine. What? And the cat is currently stepping on the dog. And we'll see when the dog notices. Okay. <laughs> he, is, he is making biscuits on the dog. <laughs> Are you making biscuits on Swiffy? You guys can't see Swift's face, but it is right here, and the cat is making biscuits on him. Um, well, yeah, so... Why do I have this one? We're supposed to make a moment out of pouring the wine, or opening the wine, and you just did it. What kind of moment do you want? Because the podcast is called Wine About It. Today's wine is... <laughs> Mayo me... Peanut Noir. <laughs> Pinot Noir? Perfect. Welcome to our wine podcast. We have Pinot Noir. T- <laughs> and Naomi. Naomi's Pinot. Um, well, great. This is this week's episode of This is so Wine About ridiculous. It. I keep saying the same thing over and over again. That's our bottle. You guys can see our bottle next to Maya. That's from last week. We'll save Aww. all of the bottles we drink. That's so cute. And I can drink this week. So that's the most exciting. Wait, for the oh. audio listeners? Audio listeners, I just peed in the studio. <laughs> Audio listeners, I have great cleavage today. And I want you to know that. Because I never have cleavage. Same. It's purely shadows. Should we talk about that? Never having cleavage? Yeah. We can start. That could be our starting topic. That's our starting topic. When I was little, I thought I was going to have nice boobs because my mom did. And mm-hmm. then I realized later that it was because she had a double mastectomy. She had breast cancer, so they were fake. Oh. <laughs> That sucks. Actually baited. Hard. I, okay, let me tell you about this girl, Christy. That's her real name, by the way. Oh, God. I meant to come up with a fake one, but I forgot. <laughs> Why would you say that? Just act like it's a fake one. What's wrong with That's you? That's her fake name, by the way. Oh, my God, Judy. Um, Christy. <laughs> Christy went to the Mormon church with me. And <laughs> I was in, like, fifth grade, and Christy all of a sudden was getting some boat boobs. I was going to say bobas, but then I realized our audio listeners would probably go outside, and so they don't know what boba is. She had some boobs, and and she was wearing a bra. I didn't wear a bra until sixth grade. That's how late I was. I didn't wear a bra until seventh. Maya's like, I still don't wear a bra. I pretty much don't. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I didn't have a bra until sixth grade, but she was in a full bra in fifth grade, and I was like, Christy... I, I was convinced if I got a bra, I would have boobs. Sure. Well. I sure. know. Okay. But in fifth grade, it made sense. So I was like, Christy, how did you get your mom to give you a bra? Yeah. And she's like, well, they got so big, she had to give me a bra. And I was like, I thought there was, you know, I thought, like in life, you could earn it. And I was like, well, how did they get so big? And she dead ass said to me, she said, I don't pray for anything else besides big boobs. Stop. That's oh, what she said to me. Oh my God. And I was Ow. like. Damn, Jesus does have favorites. Oh, 
I remember thinking that. I was like, and so that so night. You prayed. Oh, that night, stop. No, wait. <laughs> this is important. That night I went home and I crossed my arms and I was like, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. And I was like, I can't ask for anything else besides big boobs. So I have so much I need. I would like to keep my family safe. I would like my food to make me healthy and strong. But Christy said, I can't, I can't pray for anything besides big boobs. And I didn't do it. I prayed for my family to be safe because I had an anxiety disorder. <laughs> I said, maybe please be safe. Please keep us safe. Make sure my grandma's safe. Make sure my mom knows I love her. Make sure my dad's safe. That's actually funny. I just realized that all the draping's done. It looks so good. I chose family over boobs. Respect. But who knows where I could be right now if I would have just prayed for those boobs. Probably in the same place. Maybe it's manifesting. Prayer is just manifestation. And people talk about manifestation. You know who talks about manifestation a lot? It's Bella Porch. Really? She says she manifested her entire career. And so I tried. I'm talking your ear off, I know. I'm sorry. Welcome to the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Just me yelling things at Maya and her laughing and telling me bad take. I, I listened to Bella Porch on H3H3's podcast where she talked about how she like manifested her career and wrote things down so i was like okay this is it i got my i got this is literally this year i got my dry erase i went into my bathroom it's still in there you can see it and i wrote up in the top left i wrote five hundred thousand on youtube five thousand concurrent viewers on twitch thanks dennis make one friend that was my goal for this year speaking of h3 h3 you know who we should talk about today did you not you just glazed over all my goals and dreams You'll hit 500, okay, on YouTube. And? I didn't hear the other part. I was thinking subs. You've changed. <laughs> You're so selfish. We're gonna hit 500, Cutie's gonna hit 500k on YouTube because we're filming a video tonight on Omegle. We are, our first Omegle video. Our first Omegle video. After a few of these. Yep. I really wanted to make a charcuterie board and I didn't get around to it because I had to take my friend to the airport. It's gonna be Wine About It Omegle Edition on Cutie's YouTube channel. Hell yeah. So sub to the YouTube, unless you hate fun. Um, sorry, you were going H3H3. Ignoring my hopes and dreams and goals. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know who we should talk about? Who? Today. Oh no! <laughs> who? Hassan. Yeah. That's what I think. We should talk about Hassan. Mods, change the title. Talking about oh, Hassan. Hassan. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Maya. Okay. What'd you spill on? I didn't. I didn't spill anything. I heard a splash. I literally didn't. This is a new podcast room. Clip it. So I didn't. I didn't spill anything. Um. We had dinner with Hassan yesterday. We had a very nice dinner yesterday. It was very fancy. I paid. For, well, Ludwig paid for it. I had intentions of paying. She for did it. intend on paying for it, and then she went to the bathroom and Lud put his right when down. the check came. Yep. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um. We got charcuterie boards and um. Mmm. I forgot about those. That yeah. made me so sad we didn't make one today. <laughs> this is good. This is such a good podcast. Is it yeah. bad? Do you think it's bad right now? No, I think it's fine. I think it's good. You're making me feel like my comments are bad. I You're making a, me self-conscious. I ate a rotten grape. <gasps> earlier. From the charcuterie? No. Oh. This morning. Uh-oh. I ordered food. You're jumping. You need to write down what you want to talk about because you're jumping all over the place. We'll, well get we back. we're talking about charcuterie. Mods, write it down. We're talking I don't about actually char- want to talk about Hassan. I do. I do. Continue. This morning. This morning, I got breakfast, and I was eating breakfast on the road. Well, like, on like on a bench outside. And I was eating the grapes, and I ate a rotten grape, and this man walked by me while it was in my mouth, and I didn't want to be impolite and spit it out, or gross. But he was walking by, so I just swallowed it. It was awful. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. <laughs> That's what you get for having anxiety, I guess. That sucks for you. Yeah, it wasn't very good. That doesn't sound very good. So it's on. So charcuterie, we don't have one, but we wish we did. Um, Charcuterie is just adult Lunchables. True. And I love it so much. I also love Lunchables so much. Except for the pizza one, that's the, the, the pizza sauce and the pizza one smells awful. And we all need to agree on that. And if you were one of those kids that wanted the pizza one, you are now probably, like, haven't showered today, I bet. Pizza Lunchables? Any kid that liked the pizza, pizza Lunchable, you turned out weird. I really liked the cracker 
Cheese. Uh oh. The cracker sandwich the ones. Song. Jesus Christ. Again. Please. Why? <laughs> Here we go again. Okay, let's talk about him. Hassan. Um, for people who don't know context, he's racist. Um, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. He's not racist. He has been canceled and dragged on Reddit and Twitter and the internet again. Um, but he almost likes it, I think. Because he made a whole street, he makes money off of being canceled, which is not something I've thought of. He read comments for like three hours today. Yeah. <laughs> read LSF comments for like three hours. I think he did. Whenever I clicked into a stream, he was reading comments. And I think that's genius. And next time I get canceled, I'm going to go and I'm going to read every single comment. And I'm going to, I'm going to end stream when I cry. That's going to be the title. And I'll just read every comment. And then once I cry, it's like, you laugh, you lose, but. What was your first take comment? My first take? Your first hate comment. Oh. I have mine oh, screenshotted. Oh, wow. You have yours screenshotted? Yeah. I think I used to be, I made it my, um, God, I don't even know. I'll just go to Austin's chat and check logs. It was, mine was July 11th, 2019. From Diopo on Reddit said, how is she even popular? She's like a 3 out of 10 desperately trying to hide it with makeup. Damn. That is so true about you. This is the first... <laughs> 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 this is the first hate comment I ever read. So it's... in. It's, wow. It's there forever. I'll be real. I'm not immune to them. Nobody Are is. Are you? No! No, Ludwig is immune. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. I promise. No, he's not. I have never met a boy who has a better head on his shoulders than that guy. He is immune. He he doesn't see them as people. He doesn't see them as real comments. He sees them as jumble of words. Don't matter to him. It is genuinely impressive. I slapped Lud today. Like, hard. In the face. It's so weird because I went to the airport and I could have brought you with me. True. <laughs> Sorry I didn't invite you. I didn't want to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oof. Thank God. I just Gosh, read a book it. all day. Today was the first day in a really long time that I actually haven't had things to do. I read a book. I was on my phone. I went for a fucking two and a half hour walk. Um, and that was pretty much it. And I, I ate some custard buns. Well, I purposely didn't plan a stream this morning for us to do because I felt like we would We'd talk. talk. Yeah. And then it would ruin. I've honestly been trying not to talk to her. Yeah, since so. Since she got here. Besides she about, broke like, skin. I didn't hit Lud that hard. Relax. No way. Did you? No. He came upstairs, he was like, Mike, can you do me a favor? I was like, sure. He's like, can you slap me in the face? And I was like, right now? And he's like, yeah. So I went downstairs and I hit him. I took my rings off first and I slapped him. He was red, though. I hit him pretty hard. Ouchie. Yeah. What are you going to do? Okay. So Cutie and I haven't talked for what? It's been about a month since the last wine about it? It's been a month since the last wine about it. And I've been drowning busy. You have been busy, I assume. Always. <laughs> yeah. And... I, I think in the past month we've only called each other, like, maybe five times. Not even. Probably. Not even. Maybe five. So this is our last Prior episode. Prior to that, Cutie and I were, like, every other day. Like, hours. Yeah. <laughs> I've been busy, number one. You've been busy. Well, even, I would call you even if you were busy. But I think it's just because I was busy. But then at the same time, sometimes I'll pick up the phone and call Maya and tell her something. And I'll be like, I have to save it for the podcast. That's so healthy. It's not. <laughs> Were you making a joke? Because <laughs> yes, it's not healthy and it's, it's not okay, but that's what we have to do. That was a joke. Tell me the things. For thing. the success. What do you mean, tell me the things? We haven't finished one topic yet. Would you what like we... more structure? We don't have anything written down. I would like to know what you think about what we were talking about. Charcuterie. Do you like it? <laughs> what? Oh my god, this is important to know. Brooke AB's mother is a fan of the podcast. Mama AB, if you're out there. I see you. I'm a fan of you for making Brooke. I go to girls' night. By the way, guys, no big deal. I don't want to flex, but I did get invited to something. <laughs> That's actually crazy. She never gets invited to anything. I never get invited to anything. I'm always the one inviting people. Um, Brooke AB invited me to this girls' night. That was lovely. It was put together so well, and Brooke came up to me, and she's like, I want your opinion on it, because you're the event person. And I was like... <laughs> This is, uh, 
This is nothing compared. Like this is nothing compared to camp in the way that like this is gorgeous and camp is the shit camp. Like there's a dramatic difference. Like hello, you don't know. You don't need my opinion. This is absolutely. This is out of the world. Um, so she put this together. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. And I thought it was casual. I thought we were showing up and eating charcuterie. <laughs> my favorite. And um, you walk in and there's just giant balloon arch of pink balloons oh and, and Brooke's wearing pink and I'm underdressed. I'm in yoga pants and a sweatshirt. Oh, no, and I was no, like, no. uh oh, was there a theme? And she was like, no, I just wanted to wear pink. And I was like, great. She had a bar. It was everything was sponsored. Her personal party was sponsored. Can you imagine being that f- with it? I can't even get my stream sponsored. <laughs> That's wild, actually. It was crazy. So I go to the bar. I was going to ask how she, yeah. How she paid for it? Sponsored. I think she had some out of pocket, but it was majority sponsors. I go to the bar. Again, private event. I go to the bar, and it has three cocktails, and at the bottom it says sponsored by, but of the of the cocktail menu. And I was like, Brooke, you genius. Like, (laughs) it's crazy. Um, Yeah, so I I had a drink. I I was so shy. I'm really, really shy. Sometimes. It depends who I'm with. I'm shy with streamers, and I feel like I'm not with people that aren't. Have you noticed that? Like, when we're at events or something, I will go out of my way to talk to the people that are not streamers. Why are you like that? I don't know. I prefer them, I guess. I prefer the normal people. Um, and... Sorry, guys. Swift is so cute, and I feel like you can't see him, and it's tragic. But we have, like, a London thing happening here. Swift, my dog, audio listeners, is cuddled up under a blanket, of which the cat is on top of him. He's very cute, and the cat's licking himself. Anyway, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I'm not... If it's smaller, I'm really pleasant. If there's, like, four people, I'm, I'm the life of the party. But when there's so many people, I don't... Because people are standing in groups. Mm. And so I have to decide oh, where to go stand. Yeah, fuck that. And I'm like, oh my I just God. wouldn't. I'd well, I spent my whole time with Emma. Uh, Emma Langevin. She has the black hair and the... She is hilarious and amazing. And the whole time we talked about being too anxious to, like, make friends. Nice. <laughs> and so it was good conversation, actually. I genuinely enjoyed her. I haven't spent much time with her until that night. And she was great. Um, anyway... And it wasn't clicky, of course. If I stood somewhere, I'm sure they'd be inviting and welcoming. But it was just like, I don't know what I'm going to talk to anybody about, literally. Mm -hmm. And so, blah, blah, blah. Everyone gets there. All of a sudden, do you know what a sound bath is? No. We have a sound bath. And it is the most L.A. I've ever been a part of in my life. Like, you go in somewhere and it's like... No, there's yoga mats in the backyard. Okay. We all go lay down and there's a woman who's beautiful, by the way. She's in yoga. She's in a yoga cost, costume. Uh-huh. <laughs> she's in a sports bra and like, it's a okay, yoga sure. costume, yeah. Right. And she has these, like, big crystal bowls in front of her, and she she puts, like, she puts her finger or something oh. in them. And, and you just lay there? Mm-hmm. It's like Amaranth's stream. Did it live. work? Well, I didn't know how serious everyone was going to take it, because I'm just not that person. And so we all sit down. And I sit crisscross applesauce. I'm ready. Pokemon's next to me. No big deal. Don't freak out. Um, and and they're like, she's like, okay, everyone, lay down. And I'm like, I don't trust people enough for that. Exactly. That's how I, I was like, I'm not gonna lay down. I, I, I look like, around. Everyone starts laying down. I go, oh shit, we're laying down. Okay. <laughs> I say that out loud. And I'm laying down. It's freezing, and she does a. We listen to the whales, you know, sure. like. She goes around with her rice in a tin and it sounds like the rain. It was, the whole time I was like, this is a little long. (laughs) This is a little long. This is. What's it supposed to do? It's supposed to be relaxing. Yeah. But it was just so, the people presenting it was a company named Aloe. Have you ever heard of them? They sponsored it. They sponsored this whole thing. But they gave us, okay, we had. I'm okay. I'm sorry if I'm gonna talk about this a lot, but I've never been to a party like this, and I didn't get to call you and talk to you about this. It was cr- we got stuff. I got stuff. Yeah, like Uggs and shit. I got Uggs and shit. And she's like, we we finish our sound bath. I'm like, I'm at clean now. And oh, and a vibrator. We didn't get a vibrator. That's huge. We'll get there. We're not there yet. Sorry. Relax. That's so on track with what you were saying. I just chimed in. <laughs> <laughs> 
shut up, okay? Um, this is mine and the cat's podcast. Um, and we get to keep the yoga mats. Right. What of the course, heck? Because of course. Because you touch them. And then the aloe people are like, oh, and here's a whole goodie bag. They give us a bra and underwear and like some other yoga sh- for. Because we... Because Brooke had us fill out this form with you our sizes. Put in your bra size? No, I it was a sports so bra. It was a sports oh. bra. It was a sports bra. I was like, I'd be so scared. Okay. <laughs> what? Do you think people are going to make fun of you? No, I just, what a weird thing. I would They're just like, be like, why? You're go pray about it. They'll get bigger. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> just pray about it. Um, yeah, so we get that. And and then we we go for our little dinner. She had this table you, set up yeah, outside. We that. have a dinner. There's sushi. I don't eat sushi, so I was like, I'm hungry. Oh, no. I was so hungry. You just sat there while everybody ate. I had a great conversation. <laughs> Damn. And at one point they had chicken skewers, and I got one chicken skewer and one beef skewer, and I was like, I'm starving. Except I had three cocktails, but Ludwig agreed to pick me up that night, so I was I was drinking. Um, but anyway, I was really hungry. Then we go inside, and we get more presents. It's like Christmas. Of course. We got Uggs, we got Ugg leggings, we got Ugg top, we got the vibrator, we got whole face stuff. We got everything. And it was all sponsored. So can we talk about the vibrator? Yes. Because it was like a one for like clits, right? Yeah. It's like a vacuum. It has a clit sucker on it. I'm so sorry, YouTube. Please don't demonetize this. That is... Bleep it out. It is... It's human science. Half a chat doesn't know what it is. Let's be honest. That sounds really unpleasant. I've not used it. I'd be really scared. still in my car. Um, I don't understand. Yeah. Brooke says it's amazing. Hmm? But what's interesting is um No, I don't think I can say that. Um <laughs> Sorry, chat. Anyway, Are you censoring for YouTube? No, I'm censoring for like stories that people tell oh, at girls' yeah, night don't. that I don't know. Okay, if, then don't. <laughs> yeah, that's not. Talk but about. this is hey, a learning moment from Cutie Cinderella. She stopped, and that's impressive. That's actually huge for her. This is big for me. I do not think before I talk, it just comes yeah. out. Drake's in chat for Cutie. Yeah, um, that's huge. Woo! Uh, anyway, but yeah, everyone. The best. I I vlogged some of it because everybody else was vlogging and I didn't get the memo. Um, so I was like. Oh, and started, started vlogging. vlogging. Oh my god. And at one point, I turned to Tina, who opens the vibrant, and she goes, what the f*** is this? <laughs> it was just, like, so funny, because it's you Tina. You know what I was surprised by is how much Lily swears. Oh my god. I, Lily I, I, is no, so I don't funny. really watch Lily that, but, like, I I was sitting next to her, and she's, like, very quietly practicing her song, like, Rudolph the Red Nose. It's just me and Lily, like, in this empty auditorium or whatever the Christmas concert was. She's sitting two seats away from me practicing, and she's like, Rudolph the Red Nose, we and I was like, what? And she would, like, practice, and then she, I guess she would mess up. I didn't even hear her mess up, and she'd be like, <laughs> I was like, whoa, all right. Dude, Lily's so sick. That was um, really funny. For those of you who don't know, at a Christmas concert yesterday, it was Lily so was there. good. They all know. They don't know. They literally all know. Chat? Some of you don't know. Want to chat if you knew? You can't even see chat. I'm, I literally have it right here. There was a few twos. There's a few twos. They're lying. Some people missed it. They were busy. They went outside yesterday. It was a Christmas concert that Cutie put on. Wow. It was amazing. Cutie, Lud, Lily, Natsumi. Leslie. Austin, Leslie, Leslie. Sang. TJ songs. Brown. TJ Brown. They were nuts. XX Girlfriend on the piano. Amazing. It was really good. It was great. I think, um, yes, chat, Maya didn't sing, but we're not actually mad at her. It was nerve-wracking. Yeah. It was, it was bad. I didn't sing on pitch the entire day, um, but I don't feel bad about it. Usually, I think, like, when you do bad performing, like, I forgot the words to every song, I would beat myself up about it, like, years ago. I think I'd beat myself up about it, yeah. but I'm like, bitch, you worked hard yesterday. I don't yeah. care. Like, I don't care. I could have sang completely, like, with my freaking ears plugged. I don't care. I just wanted to have fun, and yeah. I did a great job. You did do a great job. And that's, there the, you first, go. Holy that's shit. the first time I've ever said that after an event. I was literally gonna say I've never heard you speak like that about yourself ever. I did a great job. <laughs> I'm so impressed. I did a good job. Nice. Um, good. Yeah. I think it was one of my best, like, easiest events. Yeah. Well, it was really stressful. I mean, we, we spent many hours setting up, and, but... I finally am getting to the point when it comes to events to trust other people. I mean, you saw Taylor yesterday. She was running around doing 100 things. Um, so I think it can only get better. Um, I hope. I hope. I was 
pretty smooth. I need a better camera. I think next year I'm going to do, um, for the people that don't sing, like Maya or Hassan or Will or Myth. Like, I have all these friends out here that don't sing. And, like, even Hassan and Will wanted to come and sit in the audience and they were late, of course. Um, but I want to do, like, a skit and make them do, like, you know, Jesus in the manger skit. Just to include them, to include more people. Because people want to be a part of that stuff. They think it's fun. and Yeah. Man, I... I have to say, I can talk about this because it was my own mistake and I feel comfortable talking about my own mistake because it's the thing I told you earlier. Yeah. Really? I don't know what you're talking Oh. I can say this. I mean, you can. Okay. I don't see why. <laughs> I thought about it. See? We're checking. We're good. Um, Leslie, who literally... Okay, the Christmas concert is on my YouTube today. And 90% of the comments are like, Leslie stole the show. She did amazing. Yeah, she did. She sang this version of Last Christmas that I didn't know even existed, and it was like, I could listen to it every day. She sang Last Christmas. It was beautiful. And before she went on, I would like try to make jokes, and I didn't think any of these through, by the way, and I just talk. And so I talk about how like Last Christmas is like a pretty sad Christmas song, if you really think about it. And I like give this speech where I'm like, Last Christmas is like a really sad song about how you give your heart to someone, and then they like... They, like, you know, keep it. Like, are you okay, Leslie? Like, are you good? She's so dumb. Cutie was saying all this, and I was like, there's no way she's thinking right now. I there's wasn't no thinking. I was like, when is she going to stop? <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I thought to myself I could make this joke with anybody, right? Because it's a sad song. So I'm sitting there making this joke, and then it hits me, and I, I bet if you watch I bet if you watch the stream, yeah, you can no, see I the saw, moment. I saw it in Because I face sit back, too. and I go, yeah. oh, f***. Because I realized, for, I, I think it's fine to say, I mean, it's obvious it's out there. Leslie was engaged last year, and she's not engaged this year. <laughs> And I felt like the so biggest bad. jerk in the... I, I didn't even... Oh, my God. <laughs> she was just like, yeah, I'm doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> I did not even think about it. And you can... I guarantee you can watch it back and see the moment it hits me. And I, I think to myself... Like... Because it was a joke I was going to make no matter what. Because it's just a sad song. It's like the only sad Christmas song that I was saying. Um, and, oh, my God. I feel like such an asshole. But I didn't think about it. I literally... Yeah, so anyway, we're working on it. We're working. It's okay. It's I know it's Leslie. She, like, when even if I, no one, no one in the world would be serious about that. Like, imagine having that moment. <laughs> like, yeah. I was just trying to make a joke, and I didn't even think about, it's all right. Next, next time. Um, but that event went swimmingly, and then we went to dinner afterwards. Yes. Who was your favorite person at dinner last night? You know, stirring up some drama. Hassan's brother. Hassan's brother is sick. Yeah. Yeah, he's really fun to talk to. He's really smart. Has he t has he talked about what he does on stream? I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, they oh they know him. They know oh, him. They know him. Yeah, he's name. been on stream. Man, he's he uh he was an aerospace major and he's a uh, he builds airplanes. He's a, yeah, he's a spacecraft engineer for Boeing. And I had like the coolest conversations with him. He was sick. He's very funny because Austin and I have a fear of flying. And so there's certain. Oh my god, her and Austin. <laughs> we were a bad duo together. Her and Austin were talking about. They were like, "I'll never take this model plane. No, I will never that. fly on a Boeing seven thirty seven eight Max." And then he chimes in and he's like, "What the f are you talking about? Why? Why? Because That's they have the safe. most fatalities." Like, in the last two years, <laughs> that is the worst stats I've ever heard in my life. They you had can't, they had an issue with you go in the air. And it would have, like, a system failures of some kind, and it wouldn't let pilots override it. That's messed up. But you know what? You didn't even... I haven't even told you about this. I go meet Tubbo. Tubbo's in town. Um, Still? Big fan. No. I wish. I'm sorry. Um, Sad. Tubbo's in town. I'm a big fan of Tubbo. I go meet Tubbo. I walk in. I'm like, Tubbo! So nice to meet you, blah, blah. I sit down with Wilbur and Tubbo and uh, a few other people... And they start talking about plane crashes. Oh, no. Tubbo and that Wilbur... That was targeted. It was targeted. I think it might have been. <laughs> Tubbo and Wilbur, has an, they have an obsession about plane crashes. That's weird. They're obsessed. Like, I'm not... I, like, they... Like, Wilbur would be like, Oh, have you ever heard about... Oh, sorry. Let me be Wilbur. Have you ever heard about the Egyptian Airline 737... Uh, at uh, August 17th, 1987, and Tubbo's like, oh, yes, that's my favorite one. Then he starts jumping up and down, and he's so excited to hear Wilbur tell the story, and Wilbur starts telling the story, and Tubbo's like, no, 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 you're leaving out the most important detail. And it's it's great. It's They they love it. They they are obsessed. It was, it was, 
I sat there. It was actually kind of fascinating. One of the stories they told me was it was a Paris flight. Picture you do this. Not need you're to in Paris. These stories. I remember them to my core. I will never forget them in my oh life. My God. Picture this. You're in Paris. You you you're leaving. You're going home. You're up in the middle of the air. The captain's like co-captain. You're in charge. I'm gonna go. F- the flight attendant. Because there's a bed. There's a bed. If you guys don't know that, in big flights, there's a bed above the captain's pit or below it. Either one. Okay. And so they, he gets the flight attendant, goes, and they're, they're doing their thing. And um, uh, all of a sudden, these things start going off. These And they know all this information because there's a record. There's audio recording inside a flight. Oh, God. That's... Yeah. What a... Oh. Yeah. So this is, this is actually very eerie and crazy. So the... Some numbers keep going off, and he's, like, talking to the people of the speaker, and he's like, oh, it's fine, and he keeps overriding it. Oh, this is what, it's this, okay. There's this thing in this plane that tells you if you're level or not. And back in the day, it would freeze over, and so it would give you a false reading that the plane's not level, especially at night when you can't see. Um, so this guy would, it would say he was, like, too far right or something, and he'd adjust it and be like, no, like, now we're good, we're left. And he'd do it until the things went off. But the things were wrong the whole entire time, blah, 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 blah. And then, um, it's been like an hour or something and the, the guy comes back and he looks at the coordinates and he's like, you fucked us. Like he literally says to him on the audio tape, he's like, you fucked us. And he's like, well, what can we do? Can we fix it? And he's like, no, like we're going to die. And then what? you hear, cause what happened is the whole time he thought they were going, he thought they needed to go, um, lower or some, like, the plane was auto-making them, he thought the plane was auto-making them go higher, so he was adjusting it by going lower, and by the time the pilot got there, they were, like, feet from the water, and so the wing caught the water, and that's how they died. Like, he was like, we're gonna die, because he just knew they were too low. To yeah, they couldn't or... adjust, because even if they went up, the back would hit the, or mm. something like that. Because, you know, when you fly, you're on the wheels, and so when it goes up, the tail never hits the ground or whatever. I don't remember all the details. Let's be... I was paying half attention. I've never had a problem with planes. I have gotten in the habit of falling asleep before takeoff and waking up at landing. Which is really It cool. is a blessing. Yeah. It's, it's... It's so good. It's so good. I got a three-hour flight from from Austin to LA, and I have nailed it. I fall asleep before takeoff. I wake up when the plane hits the ground. It's incredible. I also have way too much faith in professionals in pilots and anybody doing anything like if we were crashing i really think i'd just be like they'll fix it wow because what i'm not gonna freak out and be like oh what do i do what do i do i can't do shit i don't know anything about any of that i mean you could call people at least and be like hey i love you i'll miss you feed my cat i wouldn't call my mom if a plane was crashing really if i could text her i would but i wouldn't call her and put her through that that'd be super traumatic i never forget that phone call ever don't you think she'd rather have a phone call? She might think she would, but I wouldn't want my mom to remember a phone call like that. That'd be terrible. Oh. I am the opposite. Whenever I get on a plane, I'm already sending a message to my family. I'm like, okay, if this goes down, I love you all. By the way, the cat should go to so-and-so. The dog should go to so-and-so. Oh, I gotta... Have you written a will? I gotta write a will. No, I haven't written... Don't talk. I don't want to talk about this. this it's just an anxiety. important thing to do. We have a lot of money, cutie. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta make sure that it goes somewhere. My family will get my money. Okay. Someone will get my money. I don't... Oh, uh, my God. I'm stressed. Sorry. Let's not talk about this. Let's talk about something else. You're on your period. Why did you have to go there? Right? Yeah. Me too. You want to know how I knew? I said this on stream the other day. Welcome to Wine About It, also known as Bleed About It. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's, our new, it's our new title. Um, Good transition. Yes, let's hear about it. Yes, we're, we're synced up. Um, a couple reasons that I knew uh, why <laughs> I knew that I was getting close to my period. One. Oh, I thought you were going to say why you knew I was getting close to my period. No, I didn't know that you were. Okay. Um, one, I recently bought a Roomba, like the vacuum. Mm-hmm. And I feel... I just started feeling really guilty one day about running him because I was like, he's enslaved. Like, I thought it was really f***ed up. I was like, I feel really bad for him. Oh my god. It got to the point where I was, I, I didn't do it, but I was so close to, like, scattering cereal on the floor as, like, a treat. <sighs> oh my god. Because I was like, I, like, <laughs> yeah. and I stopped running it. And I was gonna put googly eyes on him. Yeah. Um, and I had them out, like, I bought the googly eyes. I went to put uh-huh. it on him, 
Like, I uh-huh. positioned them on him before I glued them on, and I couldn't do it, because I was like, it's just gonna get worse. Like, I'm gonna personify yeah. him more, and I, I won't be able to run him, because I'll feel too bad. So that was my first indication. Then my That's second crazy. indication was I was watching a TikTok, and they were talking about growing chia seeds, uh-huh. and he was like, oh, I'm gonna grow... It. Someone was like, grow one chia seed in this pot, and he put, like, six in the pot, and I uh-huh. was just, like, infuriated. Like, wow. I got so angry. I was like, he, cause he replied, he made a video replying to the comment that was like, just put one in the pot and see if it grows. And he was like, okay. And then he put in like six and I was like, why the f- would you make that video? Like I was so angry, just irrationally angry. And then I was like, ah. It's coming. Yeah. I, yeah, I get, it's like a bad two weeks. Cause even while I'm on my period, I get very emotional. I told, I told you about this. Ludwig and I went to go see, um, uh, my, my neighbor Totoro, um, which was back in select theaters. So we literally planned this ahead of, what? Oh, okay. Yes. Totoro? 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 Totoro. Yeah, there you go. Um, it was in select theaters in LA and we like literally had to plan it because it was like a bit out and like a bit of, you know. And so, um, we plan this whole thing, we go, we show up on time, we, like, go to the, we, the movie attendant guy was like, oh, it's in theater nine, and so we walk on in, we sit there, we're watching the ads, like, normal, blah, 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 and then all of a sudden there's a Disney short, and we're like, that's weird, but, like, Disney bought, I think Disney bought Spirited Away, or Disney has some sort of weird, um, I don't know, link of some kind, anyway, so we're like, it's not that weird if there's a Disney short, and it was a short about two raccoons and I could not stop crying. So those shorts are sad though. Or they can be. It had a happy ending. Oh. (laughs) But it was like so emotional. And I'm gonna have spoiler alerts. My tape is showing. It is. Thank you. Um, They said respectfully so it's fine. I respect you for telling me my tape is showing. Um, Uh... Spoiler alert, so if you don't want to know how this three-minute raccoon short ends, plug your ears. Essentially, it's two raccoons, baby raccoon, mama raccoon. Mama mm-hmm. raccoon has scars on her nose, she lo- or her eye. She looks really gnarly. She's, like, she's been through some shit, you know? And they're on the beach, and she's trying to get clams for her baby, and the baby's just being curious and, like, wants to go chase a seagull, wants to go chase whatever, and the mom's like, no, come back, and, like, keeps getting mad at him, like, Rah! you know, that's how angry raccoons sound. Mm-hmm. And it's like... And then the baby keeps getting really sad because he just wants to go play, you know? And I'm sad. I'm like, the baby just wants to play. Like, and the mom's being really tough and he really just wants to play. And at one point, oh my God, he gets this seashell and he he loves the seashell. And the mom picks him up and puts him back in this little cave that was safe. And as she puts him down, the seashell breaks Hmm. or something like that. And that was it for me. I just start, he loved the seashell. I start crying. I'm like, oh my god, this is too much. And then the seagull comes down, and he's like, ooh, and he starts chasing the seagull. Okay. Because he's a baby, and he doesn't listen. He chases seagull to this flock of seagulls that's around this carcass that a coyote is at. Oh Bad my news god. for baby raccoon. And, yeah. And so, baby raccoon's like, <gasps> and starts running. The coyote swipes at him, scars on the baby raccoon's nose. So he's like his mom. Just like his mom. Cute. Yeah. Mom is not happy about this. Mom goes and saves him. We think everything's fine, you know, but we feel really bad because he has scars and he doesn't deserve that. And we're really sad because he just wanted to have fun. All of a sudden, years fast forward, that baby is er, is grown up with a new baby. And same story essentially repeats itself, but then instead of getting mad at that baby, the new raccoon says to that baby, I got these scars because I didn't listen to my mom. And I just cried and cried and cried. And then all of a sudden, the movie in, in Enchanto came up. Um, and we realized we were in the wrong theater. Wrong movie. Yeah, and so we went over I to the, gone the to right a movie, movie. theater in a long time. People have been telling me that I should go to a movie theater by myself. Because I went to a restaurant by myself uh-huh. for the first time the other day. Uh huh. It was horrible at first. Oh, why? And then it was really nice. Because yeah. I was at the airport and I had an hour to kill. I like going to restaurants by myself. Never I'm just surprised it. it's horrible. 
It, it was so awkward at first. I actually do it often. Oh my god, it was so awkward for me at first. I was like, this is awful, everybody's looking at me, I'm a loser. Like, what do I even do right now? But then I started reading and then it was fine. I'm sorry, Swift is snoring. He's sleeping. They're both sleeping. Our podcast so boring? Hello? Again. No, I'll do it again. Yeah. And I gotta go, apparently I have to go to a movie theater alone, but we'll see. I used to, yeah, I like going to movie theaters alone. I haven't done it in years, but I really do like going to um, restaurants alone. I probably went to a restaurant alone two weeks ago. I just go and I work, I take my big book and I take notes and stuff and yeah, I like it. Okay. So what are... What are the topics? Shall we dive into some juicy topics? Well, I wanted to... I still have more that's happened with my month. Okay. Thanks for asking. Sure, can you please tell me about your month? What has happened with your month? I've been working, uh, streaming, crying, drinking. That's a song. Working, streaming, <laughs> crying, drinking. I know you want to cry all night. Same. Same, sister. Um, well, I went to a BTS concert. Yeah, how was that? Crazy. It seems like something I would not enjoy. I don't understand the obsession. Be careful. Sorry. Oof. Sorry. <clears throat> Admittedly, I went to this BTS concert, didn't know one single song. Right, I mean, didn't know one band member. I don't know a thing about BTS, but I'm open to new experiences. And anyone, I I have to preface this because people have gotten mad. BTS fans are very, very, very passionate. Right. And uh, this was it was in a suite. It was paid for with other influencers. I did not take a ticket away from a true fan. Oh my god. I this is are important you good? to say. This is yes, I'm covering my basis. I did not take it away from a fan cuz they wouldn't have been invited to the suite with famous offline TV people. Losers. Um audio listeners, I dabbed again. Um anyway, I go there and it is the, I've been to Taylor Swift concerts, I've been to Ed, I've been to a Justin Bieber concert. The loudest audience I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. Like, we were in the parking lot, and I was like, this is loud. And you could feel the ground move from the parking lot, which I did not like. I'm a very like anxious person. Yeah. I don't like tight spaces. And I'm like, here we go. And so we go into the, we go into our box or whatever, and the whole time you can feel the floor moving from all these people dancing. And it was their last concert in L.A. And so they go to each member, and, um, like, they gave this little speech at the end. And these guys would, like, sneeze and the audience would be like oh see that's so weird it was interesting um like you like someone would wipe their sweat off and they'd be like ah! like they'd free any micro movement there was a very loud like visceral reaction and it was genuinely impressive um that the fans are just that into it because like i said i'm a big taylor swift fan and when like they, these guys could fart, and the whole crowd would be like, bah! like they'd be so excited. Mm. Um, it it was impressive. And when the concert ended, there were multiple girls I saw crying. Yeah, people get really emotional at things like that. It's just like overwhelming. And it was like really sad. But the really cool thing about one of the guys is he he's thirty because BTS started years ago, right? Okay. He's thirty and he has this bear strapped on the back of his head. Who's his bear, RJ, which I'm a big fan of RJ, by the way. He's my bias. That's because you, you don't have a favorite. You have a bias, just okay. so you know. Okay. This is important. Okay. Um, so he has this big bear on the back of his head. And he's like, yeah, so I just turned 30 and I have a bear taped to my head, so that's kind of cringe. It's RM, you fake fan. No, guys, the bear's name is RJ. Idiots. RM is another band member's name. The bear is RJ. Don't even. RJ is the plushie. You guys are fake fans. Anyway. And so he's like very self-aware. Like he's like, I'm old and I have a bear on my head. Like this is cringe, but you guys keep supporting me. And that's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And like the, the band members seem very, very, like I said, self-aware. That was really, really cool. Um, their dancing was amazing. They like learn how to dance 
when they're like kids and so they're like so synced up it was a very cool performance i'm very happy i got to experience it and i just wish i could be that passionate about anything in my life yeah i yeah i someone asked oh, me last night like my RJ top five llama. favorite artists and all i could say was pop smoke i couldn't think of anybody else that i care about really i don't know i was just like i i don't know who else i just listen to songs oh back to brooke ab's mom Okay. Brooke A.B.'s mom was a big fan of the podcast. Okay. And she said to Brooke A.B., she's like, I felt so bad for Cutie Cinderella because all she wanted to do was talk about Taylor Swift and Maya would not talk to her about Taylor Swift. I don't want to talk about Taylor Swift. I don't care. I don't care about Taylor Swift. I don't care about your month. I don't care about your goals and passions. Dude, yeah, actually. (laughs) Yeah, let's talk about your topics, Maya. I don't have topics. What? (laughs) Last podcast. This is how it starts. This Chat, starts. here we go. We're going downhill. We're going downhill fast. I can't wait to get your opinion on hot tub streamers. Oh, we can talk about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is how the Housewives podcast ended. Um, no, we, we talked about that earlier today because the last time, and I think we probably talked about this individually on stream, but we had a, we went to dinner with like Hassan, Connor, Myth, La, Jay. Lena. Lena. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, and, uh. For some reason, we just got stun locked with Hassan on a conversation about women on Twitch and about the hot tub meta and about um, whatever. And we were just like, we just argued with Hassan for for a long time to the point that I had to say we're done talking about this because we were getting nowhere. And yeah. Hassan hates women. Supporting. Okay, that's not what the conversation. Was. No, Hassan actually loves women and he really supports sex work and he thinks it should be normalized on any platform. When I would prefer it to not be like. I support sex work, but I would just prefer it not to be normalized on the platform that I'm on. I think there's a time and a place or whatever. And so it's funny because Hassan kept saying to us, like, it doesn't affect women. And I would tell so him, annoying. I would tell, I would keep telling him, I'd be like, well, this is how it affects me directly. As and a I, woman. I am a woman. And Hassan was like, no, no. <laughs> He'd be like, no. And I was like, Hassan. And then in comes Myth and Connor. No, it wasn't Myth. Okay, in, in comes Connor. And Connor's already apologized. Yeah, he has apologized, I will say. <laughs> but in comes Connor, listening to us, very intently, by the way, and then going to Hassan and say, what she's saying is, and I was like, Connor, stop! Like, I could, it was, oh my god. It got to, I literally got to the point where I said, okay, we're done talking about this, we're going nowhere. And then, and then they kept talking about it. I said, no, seriously, we are done. And then they talked about it again. I was like, no, we are done. We're done. We're done. Um, but he had good I like, intention. I like talked about it a bunch, and then I I was like, I'm just I just gotta go. I'm yeah, my went to the bathroom. I was like, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom just for a second, just just hold on. Um, and then when I went to the bathroom, Connor goes, um, Hassan, like what she means is, <laughs> and Kiri was like, stop, like, shut. Up. I was like, we are done. Stop. We are done. Oh um, my god. But no, Connor didn't know he was doing that. He texted me after. He felt really bad. Yeah, he t- he literally said to me later that night too. He's like, I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to mansplain, and you're like, that's okay. It was just, it was so funny. Um, it was so ironic. But, but it's just it's just so funny when uh, and you, there's nothing to do. I mean, obviously, I'm we're not we're not we don't care about hot tub streamers right now. There's nothing. It's whatever they have their own section, and that's the best Twitch can do. And thank you for that Twitch. Like, I I don't care to dive into it. It doesn't affect me as much as it used to, and that's fabulous. That's true. Same. And I it it, it was the biggest. It was like one of the first times that it felt like Twitch actually um, listened. And for those in chat who missed this, how does it affect you? It's just the overall sexualization of women in, like, the just chatting section when you're sitting next. So I'd be, I would literally be sandwiched between Indy Fox and Amaranth, which isn't a bad place to be, mind you. We would love that. Um, but people would come into my chat and they'd be like, go get in a hot tub. And I'd be like, I'm trying to, I was going to watch some YouTube videos. And so it just got really toxic and blah, blah, blah. And it would just get really, really bad that, you know, it was expected of girls to get in it. But they would also be like, you know, E-Rob would be next to us and none of, no one would go into his chat and tell him to go get in a hot tub and so It was just whatever. And so it just affected people negatively and blah, blah, blah. But Twitch making that filter has significantly, significant, like, sig- like it's literally, it was kind of night and day. I'll be real. It went from, like, probably, like, 20 to 50 people a day down to make maybe one. Which is huge. Like, one person says get in a hot tub. I don't, I, I don't get it hardly at all anymore. I don't think I've been told to get in a hot tub for a minute. So, that's kind of cool. Oh, um, so, God. Ugh. 
That's what? such it's such a big topic. I have so many things to say. Yeah. Like each it's like, yeah. It's too much. That's the that's the run of the mill answer. I did. I did have a, I had a lovely hot tub stream, admittedly. True. You did yeah. do that? That was, was great. It was a good hot tub stream. Next, um, next podcast in a hot tub. Nice. Yeah, if you get us both to 20k subs. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. That's our that sub goal. That'll work. Both of us get to 20k subs and both of us will do a, a, a podcast in a hot tub. So. Big time. Pay your way there, boys, and we'll do it. God, oh, it's so frustrating. It's all right. It's okay. Um, anyway, that was a fun dinner, though. That food was so good. It was like a bunch of raw meat. It was like this really cool Japanese place, which I don't eat raw meat. Do you want to say something? No. <laughs> um, yeah, there was a lot. There was <laughs> a lot of raw meat. Um, it was very fancy. There was bone marrow fried rice. That was fancy. Ooh, that was so good, actually. It actually was really good. Um, your chat keeps saying uncage. The... No. <laughs> There's nothing more to they say. Already, about I think it. I think everybody I think our I think our positions are similar and I think everybody already knows what we think about it. It's yeah. just like there are so many things that I want to articulate, but I just like I'm not I'm not gonna deal with. It's not worth it. It'll be misconstrued. And right. Yeah, blah yeah. blah blah. And so, it's not worth it. It's not worth people not truly understanding it. And that's the whole point of perspective is to give perspective. No one will understand it fully unless you experience it. But it'll grow the podcast. You got a point there. It's you know it's a very frustrating thing to watch. Anyway, um, I went to a BTS concert. I went to Girls Night. Yes. I. I went to Valkyrie's... I got invited to a Valkyrie stream. I know. How's that? I'm famous. How does it feel to be friends with me? It's fine. Well. <laughs> could be better. <laughs> How was the stream, though? Was it fun? Was it awkward? Um, I was late. Cutie. I'm sorry. I'm always late. That is such... You Are you that person? You're just I like, don't mean I'm just to be, always I late. I really don't mean to be. That's the worst personality trait you can have. I feel, bad every, ta- I feel have. bad every time. Then fix it, bitch. I That's try so to annoying. fix it. I don't understand LA. I don't understand LA. Everything will say it's five miles away. That means an hour. Thank you for the And time. then I'll leave an hour beforehand, and I won't get there for two. I don't get it. I've I just. Never, I've never had a problem with you being late. That's because it hasn't been in person. But I've also ha- always had to come to you, I think. Yeah, I haven't, like waited on you for something yeah 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 um but i'm fine with late people no 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 i i was late on accident i was also having awful period cramps and so but what i i think here hello i think i might have taken um toast seat Damn. And so I had this social anxiety afterwards. Oh. Because I walk in late and there's only one seat empty. Mm-hmm. And so naturally I'm like, oh, I'm trying to like get in my seat fastest. And I sit down and then... And then he came back? Well, he, he was he, he was holding the camera, but then all of a sudden they put the camera on a tripod. No! And I was like, what do I do? Because it had been like 15 minutes and I'm like, oh. And I had already started painting on the easel. Uh, and I thought about it and I was like, I shouldn't talk. Like it was too late to bring it up. And even, like, I spent the whole night, like, I couldn't sleep because I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, my God, what if I took a seat? And, like, you didn't, cutie, he didn't want to do it. Are you sure? And I finger painted the whole thing. Wow. I did a good job. It's very on brand. Did blood just end? Why? I don't know. I just see him walking around. Pacing. He's just being, he's just working out. How about just asking? Yeah, you could have just asked. I didn't re- it was too late. It was I like- I just spit out that grape. That's not how it works. Yeah. You guys don't understand. You don't understand. Toast wanted to film and chill, don't worry. Okay. <sighs> so stressful. It was so stressful. That is a lot. Um, but yeah, I painted it. It was really nice. Whenever people invite me to stuff, and it's not like- I don't know. If you invite me to stuff, you're different. Or like Melena. Like, people I'm really comfortable with, if you invite me to stuff, it's nice, but I don't like get worried about it, if that makes sense. Like, I'm like, thank you so much. But like- Valky invites me, and I'm like, how do I express my gratitude for inviting me? Like, how do I, I do, do that? As weird as that is, like, I just want to, like, be like, thank you to, the, like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, I don't deserve the invite because you don't know no, me. Oh, don't do that. Isn't that, that weird? Makes you, yeah, that's cringe. I it know. makes you look really small. Don't do that. I know, but I don't mean to, but I just feel bad that they invited me because, oh my God. Because they didn't have okay. to. Like, I know I, I'm not okay, but you never want to listen to the reasons I'm not okay. 
Please tell me the reasons you're not okay. Well, New section of the podcast. Where should we start? <laughs> <I'm ready. laughs> Let's get ready. Um, yeah. Wait, we didn't do our... Are we splitting up... Are we splitting up an hour for audio or no? We're just... How... What are we at? It's been an hour and 20. I don't know. Audio listeners, none of you have listened. Have any of you listened to it on Spotify? You're going to lie to me. We didn't know it was on Spotify. We didn't know it was on Spotify. It's on Spotify. And no. Okay. Love that. We're trying to decide, okay, when you become audio listeners, we're trying to decide, would you rather listen to this on Spotify in a big chunk, so one three-hour or four-hour episode, or multiple-hour episodes? How do you prefer it posted? Well, I don't really care what you want. I think that multiple oh. hours would be better because then we can weave in more sponsors. They're all ads. saying big chunk. But we could weave in more ad, ad, ad segments if it was one hour each. Okay. I don't know how that works, so we'll see if this is in multiple segments or not. Um, Whatever. We'll figure it out after this one. But we'll pretend that we know what we're doing. Cool. Very cool. Um, how many viewers are we at? Validate me. 8.1. 8.1? 8.1. The podcast is going downhill. Yeah, we've already... Well, chat, this is the last episode. We tried our best. That's too bad. That's too bad. <laughs> it was a good run. It was a good run. My uh, Twitch app says 3.8. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! Here we go. Um. Well, we'll see you next time. Uh, it's not over actually. Okay, we talked about BTS concert. We talked about Brooke's mom. We talked about Taylor Swift. Um, we talked about Girls Night. I've done a lot this month. I don't even remember what I've done this month. You've got to write it down. I had Thanksgiving with my. Family. Oh, yeah. How was that? Fine. Oh. My grandfather's an incel and has a lot of very conservative opinions, so I talked to him a lot. It was, it was a good time. Uh-huh. Um, I saw some other family, uh, tried to explain Twitch to my family again. Also a good time. Very confusing every time. Very difficult. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've just been working at Oveus. Doing stuff in my apartment. I learned that, uh, I like living alone. That's exciting. Yeah. I thought that I didn't. And it wasn't at all, like, because of Sammy or anything. But I realized when I, once I had someone living in my apartment with me for four days, mm -hmm. I was like, holy f like, I gotta live alone. <laughs> like, yeah. I really like living alone. Yeah. Um, so. I don't think that's weird. I guess that's a good thing. Because I was the same way. I think... I think a lot of people, like, when I first moved in with all the boys, a lot of people would say to me, like, do, like in chat, they'd be like, oh, do you not like the boys? Because I said I prefer lo living alone. It's not even about the people. Like, I live with the best people you could ask for. It's not about the people. It's just... It's nice. I just like... I like being able to walk around in my underwear. Fair. Like... Yeah, and, like, have your own messes and not feel bad yeah, about them until later. exactly. Yeah. I like, used to... Like, when I lived alone, I... I, were, I would craft more mm -hmm. because I could set it up and I wouldn't worry about taking it down right. until I was done. Um, and yeah. so it's like weird things like that that I get really worried about. I can't listen to music loudly without feeling very nervous and self-conscious. and Yeah. So there's just some things. Well, not living... Like, I could do that with Ludwig, by the way. People are like, Ludwig? It's like, obviously I can walk around my underwear and with Ludwig. I could do, set my crafts up with Ludwig. It's more like... Respectful to the other roommates. I don't want to take up the whole dining room table. Right. Because I wouldn't want them to take up the whole dining room table. So I need to treat them the way I want them to treat me. So that's just how it works. Yeah. But yeah. I, I prefer living alone too. Actually, exciting update. And I can talk about this because Ludwig talked about this on his podcast. Is I with, soon at some point uh, Ludwig and I will get our own place. Which will be sick. And selling this one. Um. Yeah. I don't know. We just built this studio i i'm sorry about that um I, the good thing is is the most expensive part was the furniture and stuff yeah so, so we can move it. it yeah we can have a she shed anywhere okay um it was a good run it's a while chat that's it it's a while until that happens the boys just said soon well okay well soon in like 
Honestly, this is a compromise. Everyone in chat's like, not Austin? No, it's gonna be California still, and... Did Maya move to LA? Fuck no. Whoa, attitude. Fuck no. I hate LA. Me too, but I live here. Yeah, the only... the I come here for the podcast, and because I should, I hate this place. I'm gonna be honest. I really just don't like it. You had a good day today. I didn't do jack shit today. I know, and that felt good. It felt <laughs> weird. I don't know. It felt good. She's never coming back. I'm never coming back. Sorry. Um. But... Yeah, the boys will still be nearby. Ludwig's dream is to have, like, a cul-de-sac and have, like, all of his friends in it. Classic. Yeah. Yeah, classic. Um, so they'll be nearby no matter where we move. We'll, we'll be shopping for two houses. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very excited because I, I, yeah, I want to be able to make my messes. I want to be able to listen to Taylor Swift really loud. I want to, I want to be able to have, like, for example, when you live with, like, five people and you have one guest room, it's like... There's always someone in the guest room and someone sleeping on the couch. It just gets, like, overwhelming. And so it'll be nice to be, like, have whoever I want over whenever I want instead of having to be, like, hey, da 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 you know, navigating that stuff. So it's just really nice to – it'll be awesome. I'm very excited about that. Um, but yeah. We should bring Hassan on this podcast. You said we can't have guests on this podcast. I really don't want to have guests. Guys, guests are so hit or miss. It's like, it can be, it can like make the, it can make or break the podcast, really can. The cool thing about us is we could get any guests we wanted. I know, but it just stresses me out. We could only have them for an hour. Like, if we start and do our normal thing and then they get here like at 7 p.m. How, or something, how are they gonna leave? We're all just sitting here and we're like, all right, it's 8 p.m. No, we start. We start oh, and they come. Yeah. And we're gonna expect them to show up on time. Yeah, if they don't, then we don't care. We just keep talking until they're here. I don't know. You're a stress case. You, I'm a stress case. I feel fine. Oh my god. I just think it. I don't know. I don't like guests. They're just like special guests. Adept, Milena, Michaela. <laughs> yeah, that'd yeah. be sick. That'd um, actually be sick. That would be so fun. We could do a reunion. Reunion tour. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, th- it's a new podcast. We're figuring it out. Okay. Why bring Hassan on? Because. He's our friend, and he lives close. Um, I want to bring Hassan on because he's juicy drama. We need the clips. We do need the clips. We need the clips. Yeah. She's thinking. She's a business-minded. She's business-minded. A businesswoman. Hassan will help us get canceled, and then we can profit off of the cancellation. Oof. This cat is so cute. He's really cute. Um, well, you don't have plans tomorrow. What are you going to do with your day at? I literally don't know. Because I had plans to go hang out with those YouTube guys, um, but then they said they couldn't film tomorrow. So I no longer have plans tomorrow. Cutie has to film. I have to film with TSM. TSM. So I got nothing. I don't know. What I want to do is go home. No, I, I just want to like Uber to like the beach or something and just walk around by myself. Oh my god, I, do that. No, I shouldn't do that. I'm in LA for four days. Why? I need to You could relax. Ugh. No, I need to hang out with people. It's such a waste. That's no, dumb. you can treat it like a vacation. No. I treated today like a vacation. I read all day. You could have gone to the beach. If you want to go... Uh, I'll be right... I shouldn't say where I'm going to be. Um... <laughs> Anyway, you... Go on Hassan's stream? That's what she said. That's what I said. I said, go to Hassan's house. What am I going to do on Hassan's stream? I don't even know He will Hassan have Noah. you sit there and he will show you videos. That's what he does. Oh, it sounds familiar. It sounds like not that much fun. <laughs> um, you can go to Adept's house. Adept will do a baking stream or something. And we can do something tomorrow night. I just... Uh, I don't know. It's so... I just don't want to... Do anything. Um, you don't have to. You could just stream at the beach. You could do. No, I don't want to stream. I don't know. Then that, I don't, that is the same thing as networking. If you just go to the beach and stream chat, do you want to go to the beach? No, I don't have a. I'm not. I don't want to. No, I don't want to stream. Chat wants See, to go to the beach. They, they, said, they all want to go to the beach. They said no. See, you saw, that was delayed. They literally don't want to go. So many people are saying yes right now. Okay, a few people are saying no. But a lot of them are saying yes. They would like to go to the beach. I'll figure it out. You could pick up trash at the beach. 
I did that recently. It was I lovely. I saw that for the Mr. Beast video. Yeah, it was a lovely time. I got I attacked could go by... I hang s- out with Mr. Beast. He's not here. Fuck. <laughs> I go hang out I with... I hate to break it to you. With H3H3. You could. No. Okay. I don't know him. Aiden well. Ross. I could go hang out with Aiden Ross. He would probably reply. Can you imagine... I know, but can you imagine the shit that... Oh, God. People would be so annoying if I went and hung out with Aiden Ross. Okay, we can think of more options. But also, he's a child, and... Well, I say that like I'm... I just feel... You're also a child. I feel too... I feel like I'm too old to hang out with Aiden Ross. You're not old, you're just bitter. I am a little bitter. She's a little bitter. That's okay. Maybe... You could... I don't know what you could do. I'm out of ideas. It's fine. <gasps> I have a paint set and a canvas. You go to the beach and do a painting stream. That's fun. That is a good idea. Thank you. I'm just not going to do it. You are the worst. Chat, I'll take I'll take you to the beach and we'll do painting. Okay? <laughs> you won't. You're going to film. A different day. A different day. We'll do that. When is I'm done filming? Oh, actually, I actually can't do it after we're done filming because I have a very important meeting tomorrow. With? With a theater. For? Big thing. Big things. Before I tell you guys what it's for, I, um... Uh, do you think it's offensive? I, I put together events, right? That's what I do. Is it offensive? Oh, this is so dumb. What? Are you going to say the thing about it being on your stream? No. Okay, go ahead. <sighs> oh. Do you think it's offensive? Somebody said, somebody said, um, that my, my, I'm not a good streamer, I'm a good event planner. Yes, that's offensive. That's so offensive, right? It's very offensive. It, I heard that today and it genuinely hurt my feelings. That's not true. Who said that? Ms. Kiff. He said that? Someone in his chat said it and then he agreed with them. But he, like, made a joke agreeing with them, but it's still, like, the person in the chat said that, and it hurt my feelings. And it, it's made me think about it all day. Because I'm actually, I'm genuinely very insecure about my solo streams, because I do think they're not that great. Because people always say they're cozy, and I think that means boring. Cozy doesn't mean boring. But I hear you. That's No, that's yeah. a really shitty thing to say. It's not true. And so it, I, I haven't been able to stop thinking about it since uh, someone, since that was said, and I just... I don't know. I, I, I like planning the events. I really, really do. Um, cozy is boring. People that are saying cozy is boring, listen. Everybody wants something different from a stream, right? People say cozy is boring. Like, cozy is not like you're off the walls doing content, being super crazy, wild, doing crazy all the time. Some people don't want to watch streams like that. That doesn't mean that it's boring. It's just not like super high octane stream that you're used to and just chatting nowadays. I think I... I think I do creative stuff still. I just... You do. I don't know. Like I, a lot of really good my ideas. chat decorated ornaments the other day. That was it was, but it was kind of boring because I'm like, what do we talk about while well, I color? I can't do art on stream anymore because I stopped talking. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, and so I think maybe that's my problem is I just don't I don't think it all the way through. Um, but anyway, we're working on that. Uh, I I think um, my my next okay my next question is you've seen streamer of the year dream. Was nom- er, won streamer of the year, which is very cool. I think Dream has had a massive influence, and I think that's very cool that he won. And then Valky also won like streamer of the year with the Streamy Awards or something. I, I don't know Dream at all. There's a, I don't know him either, but he has a massive following, and yeah, I don't know. I think he's earned it. Either. Um, I think you can say I think I think you'd be a jerk to say anybody didn't earn it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I don't think there's any reason for that. I do think I mean. Personal opinion, I think Ludwig was snubbed, of course. I'm going to think that. Um, That's fair. There are, I, mean, there I really think Ludwig had an amazing year, and the fact that he didn't like get nominated was messed up. There are Even people, just a There are definitely people that work harder than others that get less. Yeah. Nim. Yeah. Nim deserves so much more than he has, and he works so hard. And you too. Germa. Like, you do... Yeah, Germa. Like, there are people that do so much, and they work so hard, and they just get less. I, I don't know why... I don't know if it's the algorithm. I don't know if it's because other people got lucky. I don't know if it's because people don't want to see people doing crazy stuff, but it's pretty garbage. Part of me thinks sometimes that I, that I have ruined my chances because of, I've had so many bad moments that I think a lot of people have written me off because of that. Sometimes I just want to be like, 
I just want to, like, a tweet or something and be like, hey, if you've ever written me off, please just give me one more chance. Because I've made mistakes. I make them live all the time. Dude, that's the hard part about being a creator is it's all... In the moment. Well, it's it's all concreted in the internet. Yeah. Look at even Alinity. Alinity's had, like, the biggest comeback ever. People love her now. But th- the amount of people that are still, like, guys, remember when she threw her cat? Or guys, remember Yeah, it's whatever? crazy. It's never going to go away. No. It's so sad, actually. Um, the same with me coming up with Miss. That's never going to yeah, go away. Yeah, that's never going to go away. It, it gets really sad when you really think of it. It's um, just a part of your history. But it did get you to where you are. Yeah. I mean... You grew through the Raw show, you know, and through your, like, moments, smiley yeah. face. your moments. I, I will say, I'm going to say, um, streamer of the year, those awards, the award shows that I have seen. Chad, I said Raj because it was the Raj show at the time. It was the Raj show. I have never really been on the Austin show. Um, the, the, the award shows that I've seen have felt pretty deaf. Um, like, just out of touch. Like, the fact that Game Awards was just, like, ads. <laughs> I haven't watched them. That's all it was. Um, but, I, I will say this. I haven't said this formally, but I'm gonna say this now. The theater I am meeting with is to host my own award show. We will. I've said it. It's gonna be huge. Like, actually huge. It's going to be huge. It's going to be a red carpet event, 300 streamers in person. I don't even know. I don't know why you think 300. Dude, I it's, don't know 300 streamers. Oh, I do. I absolutely do. It, I think 300 is so... I think I'm going to be closer to 500. Yeah. And it's 500? I could barely... I'd have a really hard time naming 100. Um, You're out of your mind. Anyway, it's going to be massive. It's going to... In my opinion, it's going to be the most in-touch... Because it's going to be categories like best Minecraft streamer, best Call of Duty streamer, best League of Legends streamer, blah, 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 all chat voted all, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, it's going to be cool. We're you know not going to call it the shit awards that? chat. Huh. You know what's going to be hard? What? It's like, because you're going to, if you're going to get that many people, mm-hmm. you're going to get people from all different communities. Uh-huh. Like actual gamers, like FPS gamers, mm-hmm. Minecraft, LSF, you know, whatever communities. Uh-huh. And you're going to co-host with people that we're, that we're friends with. Uh-huh. And the, like... 50 people in the audience and their chats are going to love, like, the jokes, uh-huh. and everybody else is going to be so confused. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I think there's still, like, that moment where they get a highlight, like, because, you know, even FPS, there's a winner of that category, that person goes up there, they get a talk, they get to right, accept their yeah. speech, they wait for that, they're rooting for the person that they, um, love, so, I, th- I think it's going to be really, really cool, I think it's going to include a lot of people, and... It's going to be... You should co-host with Forsen. If Forsen will come, <laughs> Forsen, you can co-host with me. That's a huge invitation. Um, you, yeah, that's huge. He's going to be so excited about that. I He'll love to come. He, I know <laughs> we know Forsen. Forsen. <laughs> I know you've been asking to come to one of my events. This is your invite. Anyway, it's going to be early next year. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be huge. I think it's just... it's. I was just so sick of watching. I think NIMS is the closest to an in-touch one. Sure. Um, but it still doesn't highlight enough people, uh, like individuals, and so, and I like having, um, I would love to have all these people, like, together, and so I think it'll be really cool, so we'll see how it goes, but there's still a lot of stuff in progress, but I'm saying it now, because then if you see someone copy me, you'll be like, uh-uh, that's cutie's idea, stop it, say, uh-uh, it's already being done, there you go, shut up, so yeah, that's it's, crazy, that's so exciting, because I'm putting a deposit on a theater, so, you know, you can't, don't let anyone, <laughs> do not let anyone copy this, because... <laughs> Because uh, money's coming out of my pocket, boys. So, yeah, a little nervous over here. Speaking of money, do you know my concert yesterday? Just to give an idea of how much events cost, my concert yesterday cost me around twelve thousand dollars, and I made about a thousand. You're so dumb. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're not. No, it's worth. I mean, you got twenty five k. That's it. Doesn't you can't you can't quantify that monetarily. Yeah. But I think, I think how it works, though, chat, is, like, I do it this year, I learn these things, and then next year, hopefully, I can get a sponsor for it. It's hard because I'm a smaller streamer that puts together these big events, and so it's hard to um, sell me to sponsors, because it's hard to predict how yeah. well they're due. Chat, it's it's huge that she... $12,000 sure, right? She does that event, she gets 20,000 concurrence on an hour-long stream, which is 
fucking insane. Mm-hmm. Next year, she's like, look, I did this Christmas concert. I had this name, this name, this name, and this name here. This was my concurrent viewership. Sponsored again. It's going to be bigger this year. And she makes back double. Like, Yeah, that's the goal. Fine. That's what I'm trying to do. So we'll see. My Dude, you got... <laughs> my tape. Uh... <laughs> Audio viewers, the cleavage. We talked about it. I have... It's all taped up. Didn't hit me up out of pocket. Tara, we would love a sponsor for this podcast. Help. Tara, help us get a sponsor for help. this podcast. We were we were close. We almost were going to get a sponsor for yeah. this one. And then Maya but decided then to swear. I... Wha- okay, scared. hold on. Scared. It had I'm nothing scared. to do with me swearing. I just hardballed it. I, Cutie was like, oh yeah, we can do that. And I was like, no. Yeah, she hardballed it. I should actually... Anyway. We'll figure it out, but yeah, next I th- I'm I'm going to have a sponsor for the award show, if not multiple sponsors. So oh, you got it'll it. It'll be for I sure, have to because I literally sure. can't afford it. Right. Like I'm just I won't have the money. So. Yeah. So yeah, we're working on that. But anyway, I just uh, I hope you guys are excited for that in the future. Speaking of events and all these award shows you see right now, I think I'm hoping this will be better than all of them combined. Who's, someone so. said, "Whose idea was it to make this podcast?" I think it was mine. It was Maya's idea. I just. After that, like, it was really important to me to have a female-run podcast, and when Housewives ended, I was really sad, um, Mm -hmm. and I was like, I just think I should, I I don't know, I like podcasts, I think they're good, um, and I think they're fun, I think it's good content, occasionally, and I was like, I don't have another person, I don't want to do it with a man, um, so I was like, I don't have another person in my life that is capable of running a podcast or that I wouldn't feel like pulling teeth to get to show up, you know? that Like, someone that's actually going to try. No, you have to show up. Right. But <laughs> somebody that's, like, actually going to try and put an effort and I was like, it's got to be cutie. So. I think I've put an okay amount of effort. You put in a fuck ton of effort. What do you mean? It's been Well, good. you have to show up every time. So yeah, I try I try to make up for it by making sure everything's ready. Yeah. It's been good. Housewives is a really good podcast. You're right. Housewives was a sick podcast, but it's just so much harder to organize five people. Maya barely speak, d- bro. You I'm sorry. So, no, no, no. That's not true. You guys are so annoying. I remember on Housewives too. Just like, it's like you'll go a couple minutes without talking, and people are like, "Good one, Maya." Lol. Like, and it's like there are five people here. Like, relax. We're having a very balanced, normal conversation. Please. I s- Maya, talk more. What do you want to tell me about Maya? Um, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm wearing Spanx. And it's digging into my thigh. I'm wearing space, but it's not doing that. Sorry. I think it's a size too small. Um, I think we should start talking about some raunchy shit. I think it's about that time of night. <gasps> because I have now had some alcohol in me. You know what I mean? But... I don't know where to start. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. I'm mixing... Wow, thank you for the sub! It's Sid! Sid? What was You he? met him last night. Uh, oh my god! Oh, what's up? What's up? Hello. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for the subs. Aw, Sid. I love Sid so much. Okay, Chet, what, I don't, I don't know where to start. We kind of talked about, we talked about a lot of stories last time. Um, talk about the animal sex stream? No. No. You want to know why? Because every time I bring that up, and I don't know why I do this, because it's failed me four times in a row, or three times in a row. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I start talking about, like, bed bug sex, or I was like, I can tell you everything about bed bug reproduction. I did it last night at the yeah, table. Yeah, she did it at the table. Oh, God. I was I did, like, Maya, shut I did it at the table with, like, Lud and Hassan and his brother, and I was like... What'd you do at the table with Lud and Hassan and his brother? I was like, I can tell you about bed bug <laughs> reproduction. Like, I can uh-huh. tell you so much about it. And I told them, and I, it's just, n- n- most people just don't care as much as I think they I do. have to walk off cam and pull this out of my thigh it's digging i just think most people are gonna care like i care and they and they never do so i'm not gonna talk about that hi swifty she's fine he's like so bad he thinks you're dying oh i am dying it was in my thigh she's okay and so now you have to pull it out of your thigh and so it's like when you wear a wristband that's too tight ow it's in my thigh all right we're good we're good loosey goosey everything's plus i'm wearing shorts so it like doubled up you guys won't get it, unless you wear Spanx. So what is there to talk about? Um, oh, Swift. Is there, so are there cute. any segues here? We've talked about, oh, well, we talked about the vibrator. We can talk about that. Okay. I don't like sex toys. So there's this, you know Goop? Have you heard of Goop? No. Goop is ugh, that scamming lady. She's a scammer, essentially. Guys, who is Goop ran by? 
what you're talking about. Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, she okay. runs this company called Goop, and it's like just a scam, ninety percent of the time. Is it lube? No, it's just a. It's like a beauty company or something. And she'll be like, put seaweed and dirt on your face, and you look ten years younger. Mm. Like it's a total scam. At one point, they were selling like egg whites you put on your vagina to like make like oh, no. your vagina tighten. And they yeah they sell they sold a pu- a pussy candle. Oh, no. Um, a candle that smelled like vaginas. Ew. Yeah. Ew. Which I can't imagine it smells good. I saw this TikTok today of this girl that was like, uh, she's been putting her menstrual blood on her face as like a face mask every month. And she was like, it's a way to connect to my like inner woman or whatever. It's like, <laughs> it's like a way to like reconnect with my femininity. And then she was talking about how the patriarchy has forced us to think that menstrual blood was disgusting and like gross and I think dirty. blood is disgusting. But that's the thing. I was like. I would not put that blood anywhere near my face. Like, that's... I just don't think that that has to do with... I think that the the grossness is that it's very, very close to your anus and your urethra. I, I do like think... That's waste. I that's think disgusting. something that men have done, and hear me out, feminine moment, feminist moment, is the fact that, like, we can make fun of farts and, and dirty, gross balls, but we can't make any jokes about periods. That's periods fair. are ill, and balls are... <laughs> Fucking dick cheese is hilarious, but periods are gross. That's fair. Fair enough. But yeah, anyway, she said that. But we were talking about... What are we talking about? Goop. Goop scan. Goop. Um, yeah, I would not want a vagina candle. Well, we were talking about... Well, no, I'm talking about this because they had this recent episode of Goop where this, like... They have these sex doctors that are only legal in California that teach you how to orgasm. If you, like, what do you they, mean? they essentially, ah, like, through experimentation? Yes, they, f- like, finger you or whatever. Oh, uh, no, 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 Yeah, no, but, like, in a no, medical no, no, way. No, 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 you can't do that in a medical way, dude. You can't. They literally There's stand no there and they, like, navigate stuff and they're like, have you ever felt this before? And the person's like, no. And then they're like, what the heck? So they teach you how, what you want, what you like, which is very interesting, in my opinion. There, there are so many... There are so many variables. Yeah. You, can't, you cannot do that in a control setting. There's no way. Like, the, I just, like... They have them, like, in a doctor's office, and, like, it's usually, like, the same gender. Oh. But that changes everything, too. It's very interesting. That's a lawsuit and a half. Guys, look it up. It's, like, it's like a it's like a physical sex therapist or something like that. They're only legal in California. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I don't think it's only the same gender. I think, like, you can, like, request, but the one I was reading was, like, the same gender. And, like, for example, these these two, like, lesbians that have gotten together, they are married and they're, like, you know, they're, like, we don't know how to please each other. And so they went to the doctor and the doctor literally showed them. And they were, like, wow, I've never had an orgasm like that in my life. Huh. Because they just don't know. You don't know because half the stuff you don't even, like... You know, you don't know where spots are. You don't know what to look for. They don't teach that. And so they, like, learn, which is so interesting, I think. Another, like, feminist moment. It's actually crazy how few women orgasm. Yeah. And how We've many, talked about this. Have we? And yeah. how many men orgasm? The fact that sex... F- the, the completion of sex is so traditionally... Um, when ma- a guy's done. Male orgasm. Yeah. That is so weird. Yeah. That's so weird. Um, anyway... I don't really fuck with sex toys. I've never really fucked with sex toys. Sammy and her mom took me to get my first sex toy when I was 20. That's crazy. 20? I think. Yeah, 20. What'd you get? Just a vibrator. Like a very normal yeah. vibrator. Or no, 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 that's not true. Oh. I got my first vibrator when I was 18. And I never used it. And then they got they took me to get a different one when I was 20. Did you use it? I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, like, I tried to use it. didn't like it. it. I've never, I've never picked it up and, like, by myself and been like, yep, like, this is gonna help me right now. Never. That's crazy. Yeah. And you know what is, what's also crazy is the first one, the first one that I bought, I, maybe this is, like, a really dumb take, I don't know, but it was, ba- it was practically a dick, like, it was practically a dildo. Wow. And it was, like, Target, it was pink, it was, like, made for women, uh-huh. you know? Of course. And I was like... How is this gonna help me? Yeah. <laughs> like, like this isn't gonna help me at all. Like this isn't a this isn't a sex toy for women. This is a sex toy for men. Like why? Yeah. Anyway, there's my first experience. Wait, why is this sex toy for men? Because like for they men, have to use it for men to use on women. 
Yeah, but it's yeah. not something that I would... If I wasn't dating somebody at the time, would I ever buy that and think this is going to help me pleasure myself when it's literally just a dildo? No. Maybe. Not for me. Well... The amount of women that orgasm because of penetrative sex is so small. It's just not for I me. know. So why, why wouldn't you just get a normal vibrator? Like ones that are like the size of like your thumb. It also vibrated. Well, that... Well... I don't know about all that. I'm I don't. I don't know about that. Everybody's question marking me, and I'm super. Did I say something that doesn't make sense? I I would assume if it still <laughs> vibrates, you could use it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What I'm trying to say uh-huh. is the first sex toy that I ever purchased was a big pink was dildo that like, vibrates. Yeah, it was basically a dildo, which isn't what I needed to orgasm. It wasn't even close. It's like... Well, yeah, so you don't learn how to orgasm. Yeah, but they marketed it to women. They were like, this is gonna help you. And it was like, no, like, this is what men think is gonna help you. And no, that's fair. Okay, I get it now, I get it now, I get it now. Because most people do not finish through... Because of a penis. A that's penis, not why. Yeah. yeah. Penises actually don't do shit. Let's talk about that. Honestly, true. What are, what are penises for? Just babies. Chat, I'm not, I'm no, like, sex therapist, but there are, like, clitoral orgasms and there are penetrative orgasms, or those aren't the words for them, but it's not, it's because of, like, clitoral stimulation, stimulation, it's not, it's not because of, like, a penis going into your vagina, it's just, like, not why you orgasm. So that's, that's what I'm trying to say. (laughs) Chat doesn't get it. I don't think they get it. It's fine. Chat can't find their shampoo, they are, (laughs) they can't find a clitoris. (laughs) Um... It's important for you guys to know. It just sounded weird. I'm sorry that I phrased it weird. I'm a little you bit... did. You phrased it in a way that even confused me. I'm a I was bit... like, wait, they're trying to sell it to men? I'm a little bit tipsy. No, they weren't trying to sell it to men. They are marketing it to women. They are like, this is going to help you come, but it was basically just a penis. I mean, there's 10% that does. 10%? I believe. I, b- I believe that's what it is. I'm going to Google it. This is stats we need. Percentage. Percentage. Hello, Seer. Of women that orgasm, orgasm from pene, penetration. If you sing it, it sounds less harsh of a word. My wife tells me there are women, how she has friends that never have and that still shocks me. You know how many friends I have who have never? So many. So many. It's actually crazy. It makes that. I mean, that shit's crazy to me. Um, sorry, I, that, not, that was like a lot. That was a lot. Less than twenty percent of women can penetrate can orgasm from penetration. Less than twenty percent. So that means if you have had sex with ten of them, ten women, only two of them could have orgasms from your dick, which means. If you didn't touch the clip from the other eight, they faked it. And women are great at faking it. That's not it what that means. Because you can't tell. You can do other stimulation while well, you're inserted. Well, I'm just saying, if they didn't do anything, there's a bunch of people in chat that don't know that. A bunch of people in chat don't know when it's faked. That's true. It's, I mean, it's, it's very, yeah. It's a thing that happens all the time. Yeah. Well, well, 80%... Is insured orgasm from, or seventy eight percent, and then there's two percent that just can't orgasm. I guess insured. Two? No fucking way. It's only two percent. They can't orgasm at all. Or they can't, or they have not. Can't. Okay. Can't. There's only two percent. So it's seventy eight percent. Sex ed. From, Welcome to the sex ed podcast. From clitoral stimulation, and then um, 20% can, less than 20% is, I don't know, I'm, I googled. I don't know if it's right, but, I thought it was even less than 20%, to be honest, but. Yeah, same. Because 20% seems pretty high. Um, but, have you heard about... The NASA had an experiment where they were trying to learn about dolphins. Okay. 
You'll love this. Animal Girl. I love dolphins. Um, let me get this straight, actually. I want to quote this so I don't mess dolphins it up. Dolphins fuck everything. Yeah. So, um, let me see. My sister-in-law worked for, or she was in the Navy, and she trained dolphins for the Navy to tag bombs. To tag bombs? What? Mm-hmm. How? I don't know how What does that mean? Works. They train the dolphins to go tag tag bombs underwater for the Navy. In 1960s, Margaret Lavat was part of a NASA's funded project to communicate with dolphins. And so she worked with a dolphin named Peter. And eventually, she would, um, um, she would start, like, jerking off Peter the dolphin. Okay. Um, and, um. Like, as reinforcement? As, like, um. She she said, he was sexually coming of age and a bit naughty. Um, and that led to her eventually living with Peter 24, 24 hours a day. She would stay at, like, work and, like, live with Peter. And um, would, like, jerk him off every day. Um, and, like, said she, like, kind of fell in love with Peter. And once they figured this out... Wait. Oh. She said she fell in love with him? Yes. Yes. That's too bad that she said that. Yes. Because I was kind of backing her for a second. Why? <laughs> because I was... <laughs> dude, if you're going to have a sing, If you're going to have a single dolphin in captivity that you want to perform, like, a number of behaviors, like, that juvenile dolphin is going to have needs, and, like, you could use sexual, like, reinforcement. For an animal like that. What? Dolphins fuck everything. So you're saying, like, you want the dolphin to jump through a hoop, his prize is getting for, jerked off. For all animals. <laughs> for all, <laughs> oh my for god, all, what the hell? Look, for all yeah. animals that you train, you work on, you you find their primary and their secondary That's what I do with Ludwig. You're their primary and their secondary reinforcers. Good job, you got me flowers today. <laughs> right. For a dolphin, dolphins are extremely sexual, extremely hormonal, especially when they're coming of age. If you have one, like, their primary reinforcer may be sexual. Um, okay, so what happened is she was, like, very empathetic, and she could tell, essentially, when, when the dolphin would, like, like, essentially she could tell when the dolphin needed to let one out, is how it started. Okay. Like, uh, so it, it, um... She, she, what her, her dream was to teach the dolphin how to speak English. So that's where it all came from. So when he'd learn something good and like he'd get antsy or whatever, she'd jerk him off. Um, and, um, she said that every single night everyone else would get in their cars and drive away. And there's this big brain floating around all night. And it amazed me that people kept leaving and she... Like, she felt like she was wrong. She was like, oh, this big dolphin brain that's, like, getting so smart or whatever. So she'd stay there 24 hours a day to watch Peter. Um, uh, let me find more information. One second, one second, one second. Um, da, 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 da. Essentially, they would hang out to the point that she she started questioning why she was even there, kind of. Um, but... She was convinced that the the dolphin learned how to say M, okay. which was M for Margaret, and she was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" Oh, and that's she, such a red flag. She felt like the the dolphin like was learning to you love know what her. That, you know what that sounds like, chat? Some bitch being like, "My horse would never love me. My horse loves me." Um, and at one point, people suggested that he got he need Peter needed to go in a tank with another dolphin to okay. socialize with other dolphins, sure. and she said no. She was like like jealous like margaret huh yeah where was this what facility this is nasa nasa this was a nasa program in the nasa 60s. allowed a human female to to romantically get involved with a dolphin they didn't realize okay so this is what happens dolphins get sexual urges said the vet andy williamson who looked after the animal's health at the dolph- dolphin house i'm pretty sure Peter had plenty of thoughts along those lines. And then Margaret said, Peter liked liked to be with me. He would rub himself on my knee or my foot or my hand. And at first I would put him downstairs with the girls, she said. Uh, 
but transporting Peters downstairs proved to be disruptive to the lessons that faced with his frequent arousals, and it seemed easier for Margaret to relieve his urges herself manually. I allowed that, she says. I wasn't uncomfortable with it. As long as it wasn't rough, <laughs> it would just become a part of what was going on. Stop. You're making it so- Hold on. This dolphin was not penetrating this woman. Can we be very clear about that? She, he was rubbing on her foot or thigh or leg or something. Right. It wasn't hands. like they were, like, having sex. It would, it would become a part of what was going on. Like an itch, let's just get rid of it, scratch it, and move on. And that's how it seemed to work out. It wasn't private. People could observe it, she said. For Margaret, it was a precious thing, with, which was always carried out with great respect. Peter was right there, and he knew that I was right there, she continues. It wasn't sexual on my part. Sensuous, perhaps. It seemed to me that it made our bond closer, not because of the sexual activity, but because of the lack of having to keep breaking. And really, that's all it was. I was there to get to know Peter, and I was a part of Peter. Oh my god! Innocent as they were, Margaret's sexual encounters with Peter would ultimately overshadow the whole experiment. When the story appeared in the Hustler magazine in the 1970s, uh, Margaret said, I'd never even heard of Hustler. I think there were two magazines on the store, uh, in the store at the island that they worked at. I went to one, and I found the story of my name and Peter and a drawing. And the drawing is her, underwater, completely nude, holding Peter. Stop. Oh. Yeah, my so that God. was in a magazine that interviewed her about Somebody her. Somebody drew that? Yeah. Ew. Yeah. Ew. Ew. Margaret bought oh. all the copies she could find. Uh, but the story was out there and continues to circulate. It was a bit uncomfortable, she acknowledges. It was the worst experiment in the, experiment in the world I've read. Stop asking for the link, you sick fucks. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, essentially, eventually NASA hears about this and puts, puts an end to it, right? Um, and they're like, this isn't okay. Like, what the heck is going on? Um, it was something to do with LSD, too. I think they were testing LSD on the dolphins. What? Um, yeah. Uh, this is, it's a very long story, but eventually NASA breaks it apart, right? And they say, okay, Peter needs to go somewhere else. Margaret, you're going to a different study. So they put Peter, like, at SeaWorld or a different sanctuary or something. Not SeaWorld, fuck SeaWorld. But they put Peter somewhere else, and he kills himself. How? Drowns himself. The dolphin. He just doesn't come up for air. Yeah. I've never heard of anything like that in a marine mammal. He did it. I definitely cannot confirm that, that was intentional. They said... I couldn't keep... I couldn't keep Peter. If he'd been a cat or a dog, may, then maybe not a dolphin, Margaret said. Um, it was a far cry from freedom. At the Miami lab, he held the captive. Peter quickly deteriorated. I've honestly... I've, I've never read about anything... Regarding suicide in the... I got a phone call from John Lilly, who was the supervisor of the study, she recalls. John called me to tell me. He said Peter had committed suicide. Dolphins are not automatic air breathers like we are, he explains. Every breath is a conscious effort. If life becomes too unbearable, the dolphins just take a breath and they sink to the bottom. They don't take the next breath. There's a lot of parts of that story that would lead people to want that kind of ending because it's very dramatic. I have not read anything about dolphins being capable of doing that. They're very intelligent, so there is a chance, but... Peter was in love. I would be surprised if it was something other than some, some other sort of complication. Peter was in love, and it was Romeo or Juliet. And Margaret, Margaret kind of a hoe for not following up. That's crazy. Yeah. Because I was, honestly, for a bit, I was like, you know what, like, I can, I, I get it, like, you I can saw get from a scientist it, perspective. I've had monkeys jack I'm off on me before. her pregnant. Oh, what? <laughs> Someone in chat said I looked pregnant, and then I heard monkeys jacking off on you. How did, what happened? Not even, I've had a lot of animals masturbate on me. <laughs> yeah. I've had lots of parrots get really hormonal in their breeding season. Uh -huh. um, and so parrots will, like, rub their cloaca on you. What's a cloaca? <laughs> One hole for everything. Poop, pee, like, insemination, all of it. Wow. Um, lots of parrots will do that. I've had a spider monkey jack off on me more, a, a number of times. Not just, not just a single time. Um, that was a female spider monkey, too. 
But the thing is, I mean, when she starts doing that, you can't take her off or she'll she'll rip the shit out of you. You know, like, she'll just bite you. She was nuts. <laughs> the first time she did it, I was like, no, like, no, no, like, get off of me. This is too much. Because I knew exactly what she was doing. And she just bit my ribcage. And I was like, all right. You, I mean, there's not much you can do about it. Primates are really strong and, like, very strong-willed. So you just kind of have to let it happen. But you also have to make, like, really, really strong efforts to keep that relationship separate. Because once you engage in a hormonal relationship with an animal, training that animal is... It's a whole other thing. That's, that's some crazy... That's some crazy shit. That's some crazy shit none of us knew about until right now. Chat, unlike... None of us asked that question ever before in our life. You need to relax. <laughs> It doesn't need to be a sexual thing on both ends. That monkey had a dead ass crush on Maya. She was, it was a female monkey. Yeah, she's she lesbian. She was just in heat. She is a, it's a lesbian very, hot for it's, you. It's very biological. Very biological. Biological, yeah. She was bi. <laughs> she loved Her name you. was Maya, too. Where is she now? At the zoo. In, in. Visit her. her. I haven't seen her in forever. She's, she misses you. She's 30. She's older than me. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. That's, that is, that's crazy. Yeah, that's pretty weird. I've had, yeah, lots of animals. It's just, it's just something that you get used to. It's not like a personal thing. It's just, it's a very biological thing. Unless movie. you are Peter and Margaret. Right. That they, they were bizarre. in love. I don't know how to feel about that. No, I do know how to feel I'll about I'll send that. you the article and you can read it all. Great. But it is fascinating. It is fascinating. And as soon as I heard this story, I thought to myself, I need to send that to Maya. Wonderful. And so I told you it, and I didn't remember all the facts, but I checked to make sure. And yeah. <laughs> go to her. <laughs> Someone said, go to her, Maya. Relax. You're one true love, the monkey. Relax. Oh, that's crazy. Is it? Wow. Primates are weird. Yeah. Primates are... Jane Goodall observed chimps doing strip teases for each other. Jane Goodall is... She was sick with it, wasn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's no joke. She studied chimps. Uh, she, like, lived out there. She... Yeah, she lived with them. She saw... She witnessed... Oh, Hassan male... rated us. Aww. What's up? I was... <laughs> Racist? <laughs> uh, we finished each other's sentences here. It's a good podcast. <laughs> Um, earlier we were talking about Lunchables, and I talked about my favorite Lunchable, and it was the one with the crackers in it, so, um, welcome to your stream. <laughs> I hope you guys had fun reading LSF comments today. The funny thing is, is Hassan is, like, the sweetest little muffin. Uh, is he? Hassan scares the out of me. Really? Yes. In what way? He's just, he's a huge dude. I mean, he's tall, but, like, he's sweet. Is he? <laughs> yeah, he's so sweet. He's not mean, but he's not. Oh, he I is sweet. I wouldn't say he's like sweet. Oh my god, he is so sweet. Okay, but let me tell you. Know. Every single time I see his son, he gives me a hug, like, like, like. He's like, ah, and he like squeezes me tight. He's like, no, you know what his you. son does when he hugs? What? He hugs and he closes his fists behind what? on the other side of the person. I've seen him do it. Oh no. <laughs> His fists are closed like a fucking man. I don't even know what that means, but it's like, hey, what's up? What is that? <laughs> Why do men do that? Why can't you just like, hello? <laughs> well, I don't know what. I think he's he's so sweet. I have, to pee, is so sweet. I have to pee so bad. You're gonna leave me with this? Yes. You're gonna leave me with the hoss frogs? With the what? They're called hoss. You know nothing. Do you stream on Twitch? No, and I deleted Reddit, so I actually don't know she what did any delete of you guys Reddit. are talking about. There's a cord right here. Don't step over it. Ugh, we're you out know, of you know we're what? out of wine. Really? We well, I mean we can open another one. We have literally bottles in here. We should do another one. I I didn't realize so I dropped those until I got up. Okay, I'm gonna be quick. This wine is not called Naomi, like she said. It's like Miomi. It's Miomi. I don't know what she said. What a jerk! Hassan didn't even rate us. Really? Yeah. Okay, he's racist. Yeah. <laughs> I've been saying that. What the heck? Oh, it's cold out there. It is really cold out there. It's nice 
in here, but it's not too warm. But it's kind of cold. We're in a shed. For those of you who she don't shed. know. It's a she shed. Oh, shit. I meant to delete that. Not you type it. F. No, it was an accident. <laughs> you idiot. It wasn't an F. It was a hashtag. Oh. Come here, kitty kitty. Jersey. Come here. Um, okay. What, how many hours are we at? It's 7.15. What time do we start? Oh, we started at 5? <gasps> what a good podcast. Should we order food? What? I'm hungry. We don't have charcuterie. Nah. Oh, gosh, ah! It's cold. Um, my boob is not out. Stop. This is tape. I will say one of the worst things I get when I wear, because I have small boobs, so I can wear pasties, I can wear cutlets or whatever. Um, you people in chat out themselves as a virgin when they're like, <gasps> her nipple is showing, and it's a pasty. Oh. I'm like, yeah. Sorry, you've never had a girlfriend. That's not my problem. Um, thank you, coming in. Audio listeners, Maya's meowing at the cat. Because the cat has come up next to her. I think this is the part where audio listeners stop listening. Because they're like, oh, they're drunk, bye. Oh, no. Audio listeners keep drunk. listening. Wait, I'm buzzed. Actually- no, what? Oh my god, why are you like this? I don't believe you. (laughs) I've had two glasses. I don't believe you. I think, no, but my glass is way bigger. Admit it. Chat, admit, this is empty. Yes. Chat, admit it. My glass is way bigger than Your glass is bigger. Hold your glass up. I know your glass is bigger. Oh my god. That is (laughs) You didn't have to use that glass. You said, pardon? You could have chosen this glass. I just grabbed two glasses. One of them was red, one of them was white. The glass was in front of me. You could have chosen whichever one you wanted. I was wanted. gonna swap glasses. I'm not a bitch. Well, I. She I'm, set me I'm up. being gaslit. I grabbed two glasses oh out. Oh my god! I don't. I grabbed two glasses you. out of the. I grabbed two glasses out of the cupboard. You're gaslighting me. You're somebody, gaslighting somebody, me. Somebody, literally, somebody said you're gaslighting me. You're gaslighting me. You Chat. Know the worst. Of, no. I grabbed two glasses out of the cupboard. One was a red glass. One of them was white. I was like, it doesn't matter. We're not fancy. We don't know the difference. And I, I come in here and I set them down. You could have picked if you were picky. You chose the red glass. You remember one of the worst times I've ever been gaslit? Yeah. I, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't understand gaslighting. You don't? Unfortunately. I really don't get it. And so it confuses me when people say gaslighting. Gaslighting is when you like... You, you convince just, someone of a lie, essentially. Yeah. Or, like, you do something fucked up, and then they react to it or something, and you're like, it's because of you that you feel that way, you know? Yeah, it <laughs> really you make confuses them feel, me. You make them feel crazy, yeah. The phrase gaslighting really confuses me. Um, Chat. One time, I had a friend who, this was back in college, I had a friend who was, like, my best friend. And I was seeing this guy, and I ended it with the guy, and I was like, to my friend, I was like, can you make sure that he's okay? Because I thought he was going to be really sad. And so that night, she went to make sure he was okay, and she made out with him in the hot tub, told him to pretend that it was me, and then tried to have sex with him, and he said no. And then when I confronted her about it, and I was like, yo, like, that's not cool at all. Like, why'd you do that? (laughs) She gaslit me. (laughs) And she was like, I was trying to help both of you because he was never going to get under you, never going to get over you until he got under somebody else. Like, it was helping both of you. And I was like, oh. (laughs) Oh, of course. Of course. Uh, That's probably the worst I've ever been gaslit. Maybe. Probably. It's not the worst. No. But that's one of the times that I've been gaslit. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway. That is crazy. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Speaking of crazy stories, this person I know, this this boy I know, okay. I'm friends with him for a very long time, went to high school together. Um, no, it was not Tatiana. I went to high school together, and um, he... He used to go to our friend's house, um, 
And I'm totally lying about a lot of details in the story because this is not even my story. This is a friend's story that they told me and I just want to keep this very, like, whatever. Okay. But if, in case that friend listens, I am stealing your story and keeping it very vague and pretending it's my story. So, because it's a good story. So I'm friends with this person, me and, you know, this other girl. Let's call her... Give me a name. Samantha. Samantha. I love Samantha. Me and Samantha were really good friends with... Um, a boy's name. Brett. Anyway, we're playing Mad Libs now. Me and Brett. Me, Brett, Samantha, we're all really good friends. We we grow up together, whatever, we're super good friends. We keep going to Samantha's house, Samantha's house. Samantha's mom is kinda hot. Like she's just a she's just a MILF, you know, and we yeah. don't we don't mind her. We're just like, oh she's great. Five years later, we are sitting at dinner. All of a sudden, Samantha's mom is sending nudes to Brett. Like on Instagram. Oh. Samantha does not know this, by the way. And we're like, what the f***? So we're out of high school. So it's legal. It's totally legal. And she's saying things. Like, she's trying to talk dirty to Brett. And she's saying things. And I can see all this. Samantha doesn't know, but I can see. She's saying things like, when you used to come over, did you think I was hot? And he's like, dude. Mind you, she is newly divorced. So at least she's not like... It is sad, is what it is. My friend, when she was making out the guy, friend, she she was friend. literally, she, yeah, no, she was like, just pretend that I'm Maya. Like, think, like, look at me and think that I look like Maya right now. Like, just pretend, just pretend that I'm her. You'll be fine. You'll be okay. Dude, that's crazy. Pretend. Anyway, in that situation, if you are Brett, you never tell Samantha, right? Until you're her stepdad, then mm-hmm. you're like, hey. <laughs> mm-hmm. do your laundry that's crazy huh I didn't think I did not think that stuff was real until it happened to someone in my circle and I was like what that's a lot that is a lot how do you know that because the guy that I ended it with told me because <laughs> we were still friends or whatever he was like you would not believe what she said and I was like damn no kidding that's so crazy. You know what she... Someone in chat said, he lied, Omega lol. Imagine if your friend would have just come back and be like, he lied. Would you have believed her or him? About him getting nudes from her? No, no, going back. Like, I saw the nudes from the mom. They are amazing. Uh, well, they're actually very old lady nudes. Like, she doesn't know how to take good nudes. And you're like, come on. Like, she's taking pictures of her coochie. And I'm like, no one wants to see a coochie. Right, yeah. You don't even want to see your own coochie. Um... And, uh, no, I'm saying your story. Like, imagine, oh. you know, if she you was go like, to your friend, she's like, if he's she was lying. Like he li- I'd be like, oh, who would you okay. believe? Him. 100%. Interesting. But that's also, there's also history there. Okay, that's fair. It makes it different. That's fair. I think, I think, is there anything she could have say, she could have said to, like, save herself? Why? Because he... <laughs> He used to have a crush on her, and then he got a crush on me, and she made a comment about how I took her puppy away from her because he used to follow her everywhere, and now he was obsessed with me. I feel like that's enough evidence for me to be like, "Eh." I need mods to ban anyone who's saying I'm pregnant. I am... Who is saying that? Oh, well, I've seen it a few times. Every single time I lean back. Nobody is saying that. Guys, this is my thigh... This is my tummy. I have... Nobody's saying that. You're making me feel bad. Stop. This is... You gotta... You know what you have to do? What? You're a bigger streamer than you think. You need to act like a bigger streamer. You need to... I can't. You need to act like you don't I'm a human. Maya. So am I. They say really mean things to me and it makes me feel really bad. Me too. They keep me up at night. Dude. I feel awful all the time. I feel awful all the time. You you have to act like you don't see it. You gotta act like you don't... Or you have to start reading chat less. You're actually... Not the first person to say this to me. My my mods are really good about getting it out of there. Because the past couple months have been fucking terrible, right? I believe that. But, like, you just have to get... You just have to read chat a little less frequent, frequently. Because they get rid of it uh, immediately. But you get so used to it. That's no, the hard thing. No, you just don't see it. I depend on my chat. Straight up, you just don't see it. Chat, I'm going to stop looking at you. No, you don't have to stop looking at it. It's I'm just, stopping. like... Just reduce the frequency a little bit. It's crazy. I there Because I know there's been so much in my chat that I have not seen... And it's just because I've intentionally... Because your mods are fast. Yeah, I've intentionally started looking at it a little bit less. That's good advice. But I don't think that... Like, chat, have you noticed that I've been looking at chat a little bit less 
in the past couple months. I feel like you haven't. It's an intentional thing, though, but it really, it just doesn't make a difference for them. It just makes a difference for me. I think the very hard thing is, is as a streamer, when you grow, when you're a small streamer, you know your career depends on responding to chat. It really does. They, you know, people come in and you have 10 seconds to make an impression. So you want to respond as quickly as possible. At least, like, you kind of had a blow up much quicker than me. But I, you know, I streamed League of Legends for six months to 20 people tops. And I knew as soon as someone came in chat, I had to make them feel welcome. And so it's been ingrained in my brain that I shouldn't miss a message. I shouldn't, you know, so Dude, my, I just am so focused. It's like you have to learn how to filter what's an actual person and what's just like a broken, not worth your time person. Yeah, I don't Which know. Which is how to so do hard that. to do when it's just a username, but like. You gotta be able to see patterns, you know? It's actually really difficult for me. Because I just think anyone can be reasoned with, which just isn't true. Shh, I know. That is so not I know. true. Oh, I know, but God. I just, I believe in humanity too much. Stop! I you believe in you. You live in LA. I, I What do you mean? I'm not meant to live in LA. You know that about me. I know, but you've been living here. You've gotta stop. I don't go out. Do you guys know the number one reason I don't go to the club? I've talked to Will Neff about this. Will Neff is a partier. He loves clubbing. He loves going out. He really, really, really j wants to take me out and wants me to have a good time. Same. And I tell him no because of the way people are in L.A. I do not want to go to a club. I do not want to deal with these people. The I think I could go to a club in Ohio and have a great time. The only time I've gone to a club with Will Neff, I got myself to the club, which oh, was a yeah. nightmare, by the way. Oh, I remember this. Getting myself to... First of all, I had to Uber. The Uber got stuck in an alley. A fucking alley in LA. Like, in an alley. I had to get out of the Uber because the traffic was so bad and walk my ass to the club. Which was terrifying in itself. Because this yeah. is in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Got to the club. Showed up in my normal attire. Like a crop top, yoga pants, Birkenstocks, right? And the bouncer looks me up and down aggressively. Like, so blatantly. He goes... Yeah, we can't do those sandals. And I was like, so I, like, so I can't go in? Or, or what? And he was like, nah. So I wait outside, I have to call Will Neff. Will comes out, flexes his money, says that he bought this table, because he bought a VIP table, which is like several thousand dollars, right? He has to flex his money, get the manager. The manager comes over and she like yells at the security guard. And she's like, why are you treating our guests like this, blah, blah, blah. And you know damn she's well. She's just saving face. You know damn yeah. well. If he didn't buy a table, if I was a normal club attendee, she would just be like, she wouldn't, I mean, she wouldn't come out. She wouldn't no. care at all. And neither would he. Like, that's how he treats everybody. But it was because Will had bought this table inside, which wasn't even a fucking table. It was like a little tiny, it was like a nightstand. It was where smaller we could than set this coffee table. Down. Our coffee table literally is smaller than, than this. Table. Smaller than this. Uh, Seven thousand dollars. dollars. We have a pretty big coffee table. Yeah. Smaller than this, several thousand dollars. But she came out and she's like, why are you treating people like this? Like, what, like, blah, 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 blah. And then I walked in with my Burks, but only because Will came out and flexed. LA is f crazy. I've never yeah. had an experience like that ever. I almost cried outside. I was so embarrassed. I don't blame you. I was, I was sitting in the hotel not going. <laughs> Dude, all these girls were walking in with, like, sparkly dresses and heels and shit. And I wasn't prepared to go clubbing. Like, I yeah. just had my normal clothes. This was during the G4 event, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and he was just like, no, you're not walking in here. You know what's interesting? I, actually, this is good perspective to get from chat, and I know chat is definitely going to take... I wasn't wearing socks with my sandals. I was just wearing sandals. Uh, chat is going to take... I know what side chat's going to... Chat is going to take the rational side that I normally am, for the record. And I know you guys are going to take this, so... But I, I'm at... I'm hanging out with a bunch of girls, mind you, right? And, uh... I... Ludwig went to the club that night. Ludwig goes to the club with the boys. If they go to the club, he goes to the club. I don't care. I really don't care. I, I could have gone to the club multiple times and I'm, I would rather not go because I know how it'll make me feel. And I will not feel good in an LA club with a bunch of people that are size zero and have numerous plastic surgery done and are just gorgeous out of their minds. I, I just know I will feel bad about myself for weeks, so I choose not to go. Um, and so, you know, I sit, I, I sit at home, he goes, I don't care, he goes, he's gone, I think once or twice, it's not a big deal. And I'm hanging out with a bunch of girls one night and he's talking about going to the clubs with Hassan. And... And I don't think it's a big deal. I'm like, yeah, go to your thing. And a girl asks me, they're like, where's Ledge tonight? I was like, oh, he's going to go to the clubs. And they immediately panic. They're like, he doesn't need to go to the clubs. He has a girlfriend. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? 
And they're like, they're like, and it's all the girls at the table. Like, they're like, honey, hello. Like he, he has a girlfriend. What is he going to the clubs for? And I was like, I don't to have fun. And they're like, no, 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 no. People go, like men go to the clubs to hit on girls. What is he going to do? Watch his friends hit on girls. And I'm like, yeah. There's lots of things to do at clubs. I I don't know. Cause I don't go to the clubs. I'm kind of like, yeah. You know, like I trust my boyfriend. It's, I feel fine. Like I genuinely feel fine. I think he's trying to have a boys night, whatever. But then every girl around me is panicking. They're like, homegirl, this is a red flag. And I'm like, what? What? <laughs> it's like, it's like people telling you your house is on fire when you know your house isn't on fire. And so I start panicking and I'm like texting Lud. I'm like, are you, are we good? Are we okay? Like what's going on? And it's just like, and like Lud and I have talked about it and it's fine. And even when I brought it up to him, he's like, so do you not want me to go to the clubs? And I'm like, no, I don't think I care. I'm just giving I, you I the do, social communication on honest, how I felt. I draw the line at strip clubs. You've said that, but I Which, feel fine about strip clubs. I don't clubs. think I've ever said that live. You've said that to me. You're fine about strip clubs? I, yeah, they're performers. I mean, if he got a lap dance, I'm like, weird, but okay, like, well, that's, he's not going to see boobs from me, so he might as well see them somewhere. Maybe it's because I've never, Jesus Christ, that is so, don't say that. Um, maybe it's because I've never been to a strip club, but I kind of assume that lap dances are part of it, but also, no, I mean, the, they're the not. point, well, the point of going to a strip club is to see strippers. You yeah. actually, you explained this perspective to me one time, and I understood it, and I had never thought of it that way before. Because you go to if you street if you see strip cl- if you see strippers, you are then in hand getting horny, correct? But the other thing is, I'm completely fine with porn. So what's the difference? If I there's if there's no intimate physical yeah. connection, like what's the difference? I don't know. I have no issues with porn whatsoever. Like watch porn, consume porn, masturbate to porn, whatever. But like I'm not okay with a strip club, and that's pretty inconsistent, actually. Yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand the difference. Maybe it's because it's like actually with the when you're watching porn, it's not possible. But when you're at a strip club, it could be like she's a real human at that point compared to a human on a screen. Yeah, I guess. Um, maybe that's it. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, just proximity, proximity, and maybe like intent. Cause, cause porn for me is like you're horny, you just want to, like, it, it, like, what I was talking about earlier with the animals, like, it's just, it's just, like, a need, you know, just, like, get yeah. it over with, get whatever, and, like, that's it, and that's fine with me. Something about a strip club is, like, I don't know, maybe it feels like there's more intent there. It, it just feels like I don't you're, know. you're going I'm interested like, on other, like, I'm interested, I, the majority of our audience on Twitch.tv live is males, admittedly. I'm very interested on other females' opinions on this. Um, yeah, but, like, going to, like, bond with your boys about how hot this stripper is, that's like, kind of, well, that's what the other girls pointed out about right. going to the clubs. They're like, honey, all he's doing is like, like if, if, you know, Hassan goes, hits on a girl, like he goes back to Lud and he's like, oh, she's so hot. And then Lud's like, yeah, she was. But I'm like, I literally sat there and I was like, no, Lud's not like that. And Someone said, it's fine if it's a group. If your man is going to a strip club, club alone, that's enough. That's actually... That's yeah. enough. I'm going to be honest. It has that's to be a That's a whole group. different thing. Yeah. Thank you for the five, Biggie Yoda. Sorry, continue. Essentially, that's all I'm saying is, like, it was just weird the way that, like, people kind of, it's, I, I genuinely still feel fine about Ludwig going to clubs. I don't care. I think you can hang out with the boys. Clubs are fine. Strip clubs, clubs are not. Clubs are fine. But it was just crazy. Not crazy. Crazy is the wrong word. I don't like when crazy is thrown out when it comes to just, like, pers- like female perspective. Yeah. But it was just very interesting to me to hear, like, Oh no, like he, he he can only go to the club if he's seeking other females. Somebody said Chazzy said, What if they go to a strip club for a bachelor party? I know it's like such okay, I'm kinda scared to say this because I don't want to get Uh-oh. I know it's like such a traditional thing, but I think having strippers for a bachelor party is f- bizarre. I think it's fine. I think I that's think so I weird. can say that no, I think it's fine. I had an ex go to a bachelor party with you know what? Okay, tell Dude, me if I was about to get married to a man and he was out with his boys one night, and they hired a bunch of strippers to do lap dances, and okay. you know he's, she's focusing think, on the groom. I think lap dances are too far. I'd be like, but what are you going to hire strippers for? To strip in front of you? In front of you and all your boys? I'd be like, what? That's like watching porn together. That is a man that is too young for me. That's, uh, that's, yeah, that's all, a good point. Dude, that's my whole perspective. Like, I okay. don't want to get married to somebody that wants to go out with his boys and is going to, like... Go out for a night and need strippers to be like, yeah, like let's go. Like that man just I've seems too I've never really young. thought about this. That's frat shit. I've never thought about this in the current state I'm in because Ludwig is very different than any guy I've ever dated. He's very, very. I, I don't know. I feel very secure with Ludwig, so it's like very different. And he, I don't even think he'd be interested in that. Actually, last time I went to Vegas, I was the one that wanted to go to a strip club, and Lud's like, nah. I would go to a strip club. 
I, you said you would not go to a strip club. I would go to... What? Why did I say that? Because I said in Vegas I want to go to a strip club. And you said, no, I don't want to go. Do not... You... When? Do when not you're gaslight just me. in Vegas. Yeah. I said I want to go to a strip club. I'll literally go to a strip club. I don't remember telling you that. Who said no? I literally don't remember telling Somebody you that. in the group said no. You were like, no, I don't... I'm gonna find... And I said titties, and you were like, no. I'm finding the I DMs. I am scared of I'm seeing fi- titties. That's what it was. Okay, I'm no, finding but, the DMs. No, but I would still go. I thought, okay, okay. Oh, wait, no. I do remember this conversation. I told her no because I was DMs. like, I would get two in my head, and I would feel bad for the girls. I said that. I, I remember Vegas. that. Vegas. Vegas. Where, who was it with? Where, who, Will was there? Chat, I would just like, I would write these narratives in my head about like, these girls not wanting to do what they're doing. And I would just feel guilty. I will say, I went to a strip club in New Orleans, and that's how it was. It was a you bunch of girls bad. that you felt bad for. Right, yeah. And so I just gave them all my money. I that's was like, what I'm scared of. But, like, I've always... Wa- I want to go to a strip club in Vegas because Vegas is supposed to be the pinnacle of, like... Like, people travel to Vegas beca- to become a stripper. Like, like you know, strippers that, like, are in kind of shitty clubs go to Vegas to make more money and be, like, hot-ass strippers. And so I've never been to a strip club in Vegas. But I've been to I've been to strip clubs in weird places. I'm never places. going to Vegas again. Well, okay, that's kind of fair. You had a weird I don't experience. care about Vegas at all. I have no desire to go back to Vegas. If you want to know about our Vegas experience, please visit the last podcast. Listen to it all in full. If you want to know about our Vegas experience, we did a really good Twitch Rivals event. Me and Cutie Cinderella raised a lot of money, but I got drugged. We haven't been paid, club. have we? No. Okay. Well, good. Sh- Honestly, Sad Dad, by the way, Sad Dad, we've talked about, who built this amazing podcast space and the set yesterday, I've never met a more in-tuned, talented person. Like, all I have to do is show her what I want, and it's just done, and it's just gorgeous, and it's just, like... It's actually true. She's She insane. picks it out of my... She's insane. She is insane, and insane. she deserves way more credit, and I... I... She is genuinely one of those people... Speaking of, we have a present from her. Oh, shit. I have a present from her, from the concert yesterday. Let's open it. Woo! Christmas! Uh, audio viewers, I'm opening a card. And it has cute cats holding a Christmas tree. Yay! That's very cute. And I think she's gonna say something inside of it that's gonna make me cry. Oh, Cutie and Maya! Oh, no way. Really? Yeah. I thought it was just for you. Thanks for having me. It's honestly been the most enjoyable way to end the year. Wishing you both the best this holiday. I hope next year, no matter what space you dwell in in the home or with work that you'll feel like yourself and feel like home cheers exo said i'm gonna cry that is so That's... well worded oh my I god almost... what the f- i do not want oh. sad dad to get popular because i need her i need her no one else can hire her i need her i need her she for didn't even like cross anything out and change her mind like, no it was just that it was just well so done. heartful you know what's crazy is last night so, you guys heard me. If you watched the concert last night, I had the speech about, like, um... You cried. I cried. It was pretty embarrassing. I didn't mean to, for the record. But, like, the thing is, is I started streaming. I started streaming because my mom died. And I was super, super lonely. A lot of people know this. I was super, super lonely. I talked to my mom every single day. And so I started streaming because I just needed someone to talk to. And my mom loved Christmas. So a big part of the concert was, like... I used to have Christmas concerts as a kid because I was a choir kid, and my mom would show up front row fucking ready. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, a lot of the inspiration pulls from the idea of being lonely, the idea of Christmas, the idea of how much it meant to my mom, and doing this concert. I didn't want to say anything about my mom on stream because then I would have really cried. I would be like... (gasps) And so, anyway... I cried when you cried. I, it was, I mean, Christmas is a big deal for my family, at least, and I hate the idea of feeling alone. I feel alone a lot, and so I hope, like, at least everyone had that moment of warm, fuzzy feelings watching the concert. And I, I talked to Sad sad Dad at the door, and I was like, thank you so much, like, I, this was amazing. And she was like, we were crying watching, like, you know, when you cried, and I was like, I was like, yeah, and I told him a story of my mom, and, you know, kind of what it meant, and she was like, S-. and the first thing, and t- this is, like, just not a human response, she says, thank you for sharing that with me. And I was like, actual normie shit I was like oh my god person reaction and she's just like the sweetest human in the whole world and I can't wait to she's like a part of my life now I will not let her not be a part of my life because I just need her for so much like I need her for just gorgeous things and the thing about this space that's interesting like this podcast space chat you're looking at it is that every single person I brought in here just to show them the space we end up sitting on the couch and they tell me their deepest darkest secrets or like whatever's going on in their life 
every single person. We should talk about her deepest, darkest secrets. Every secrets. single person, because it's just that she's created not just a set, she's created like a space. A yeah. space. It's very it's impressive. Very intentional. Anyway, she's yeah. very, very talented, and n- I don't want her to get popular because I need her in my life. Um, but I do want her to be popular and successful. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> she got us this present. Audio listeners, I'm opening the present. What the heck is this? Wait, it's cute? I thought it was just like chocolate or something. She got us both little keychains. No. Keychains. They're little hearts. They're little oh handmade keychains. And oh my god, cat and dog hair clips. Oh shit! Wait, I have hair now. Give it to me. Oh no, they're dog hair clips. Oh my god, which one do you want? The probably the dog because you're. In- they're Wait, both it's- dogs. This is a King Cavalier, and that's a what? It looks like a, a Bern- Dachshund. It looks like a Bernese Mountain Dog. Oh, it, also it does look like a, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Oh my god. These are so insanely cute. Wait, I have two oh. pigtails. Okay, we're clipping. Okay, we'll we're go going one. back. We'll go to one pigtail. Holy cow, sad dad. She's amazing, guys. All right, she's amazing. She does, she worked so hard yesterday. She worked so hard on the set. And then she tweets that she's thankful for me. And I'm like, <sighs> yeah, bitch, what? Yeah, I'm like, what hello. Do you mean? Oh, we're clipped up. We're clipped up. Ow. Dude, she is, she's out of this world. I've never met a human more just thoughtful than her and talented. Look at that. Look at that Bernie's Mountain Dog clip. Did I do a bad job? No. I'm drunk. Oh. No, I think it's great. I kind of have to pee, but I really don't want to go inside. I gotta pee too. Hi, Swift. I just peed. I really smell butter. <laughs> you said I just peed like you just peed on the couch. <laughs> I just peed. I peed on the couch. Anyway, these are cute. Thank you, Sad Dad, Thank for the you set. So Thank much. you for the so present sweet. and the whole content segment on our podcast for you giving us a present. Maybe, maybe I should have people send stuff to our PO box sometime. Oh God. We should have done a Christmas episode where I had people send stuff because I have a PO box, and they could have addressed it to Maya and Cutie. Damn. It's all right. Next time, next year, because we'll definitely still have this podcast next year. Dude, what do you think is gonna happen to this podcast? To, to, to this podcast. I think if we drop significantly in viewers, we'll get very discouraged. But I think regardless the amount of viewers we have, that it is a successful podcast. I think it's a good podcast. You think if we drop down to 5K, we're going to keep doing it? <laughs> I hope so. We're at 10.5. But I get why we, so this is what you're going, what you're witnessing right now, chat, is the cyclical issues with streamers, is we find our worth in our viewership, and we have no clue what could be going on today. There could be a Lakers game, there could be... There's just a bunch, there's a, a lot of A smash event. Live. There's a lot of people Ludwig could right be live, I mean, Ludwig is live on Slime Stream, you know. We should go live later. I, my thing is always, like, 5 o'clock, because for some reason in my head it's like, oh, it's 5 o'clock somewhere, like, we're drinking podcasts, it makes sense, but honestly, we should probably go live at, like... I like, purposely go live at like 8 p.m. because, well, well, I go live at 6 p.m. because what happens, I go live at my normal count. All of a sudden, I see all these Haas frogs, and I'm like, oh, that song got offline. All of a sudden, I see all these right. Miz kids, and right. I'm like, oh, Miz got offline. All of a sudden, I see all these Lud Buds, I'm like, oh, Lud. I am the queen of overflow. I am the backup streamer, which feels bad because I'm like, why don't, want, why don't you want to watch me? But I'll take it. Refugees. Dude, I'm a second monitor streamer, always. I always see all these them. XQCLs all of a sudden, and I'm like, wow. He got offline. Right. But, yeah, my best, my best viewership is midnight. I'm not kidding. I, mine's, like, 10, 11 a.m. Yeah, that makes sense, because no one else is online. 10 a.m. CT. It's, like, 9, 8 a.m. PST. I will say, I will say, XQC's chat, they have a bad rap. Like, a lot of people think they're toxic, but I was the camera girl at Universal Studios for an XQC stream recently, and... They were sweet little juicers. <laughs> That's the move. What? Catering to the XUC frogs. <laughs> we love, love you. <laughs> we love you so much. If you love XUC, we love XUC. XQC Welcome to the stream. From each and every one of us. Merry Christmas. <laughs> you're not supposed to tell them that you're catering to them. Sorry. Right? Idiot. XUCL. Okay, we're going to do viewer call-ins now. Huh? My number is nine. I'm just kidding. Imagine if we did that. That would actually be a funny segment. That would be crazy. Has your number ever been leaked? No. 
Uh, my Google number got leaked and I just my deactivated it. Really? You, you shouldn't say number. that. People are going to find it. It's a new number now? Oh, okay, okay. You know okay. how it got leaked? How? Miss Tricky. <laughs> Oh, Miss Tricky. What she's did she got, do? She's got, her, she's got her phone. I called Miss Tricky, right? She doesn't have my number saved. She hands the phone to Ms. Kiff on stream, like you're Ms. Kiff. She hands it like this. Oh my god. My whole ass number is on the screen. Tricky stream. is the sweetest heart, Dude, but she is the dumbest sometimes. You, you should have seen the amount of texts and calls I got. It was fucking oh disgusting. Oh my god. I had to change my number immediately. Now I have an area code that makes no sense. Holy shit, I have so many DMs at the moment. I went to- chat. This is- maybe this is a little bit paranoid. I went to a city that I've never been to in my life to go to an AT&T store to get a new phone number so that my area code had nothing to do with me as a person. <laughs> that sucks. My area code makes no sense. People are like, oh, where is that? <laughs> just like, don't worry about it. I have you no should have flown to like Ohio. <laughs> I didn't know. I want an Ohio zip area code. Next. Oh, I still have a tag on this. This dress Maya and I bought together, actually. And I haven't, I oh haven't even God. tried it on. We bought... You, really? Mm-mm. You, you saw how I shopped. Yeah. Cutie and I went to... When we went to Vegas, we went shopping and we got both of these did, dresses. Wait, did you see I how got, psychopathic I was? I almost slid it behind the couch. Why did I almost do that? Ew. I know. <laughs> I leaned back to slide my tag, my garbage, behind the couch. I, uh, I got that this. We both got these dresses from Vegas. From that one shop. It was so cute. I loved it. Yeah, it was actually really cool. Wait, why is everyone... Oh, they're typing area codes. I was like, why is everyone typing three numbers? Nobody's gotten it so far, if that makes you feel any better. Wow, Maya has super secret number. It's very secret. It's very secret. Yeah, you can't know. You cannot know. I literally have not seen the area code. That's actually crazy. But you guys are so dumb. <laughs> you guys are so stupid. It is Ohio. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, audio listeners, uh, viewers are spamming the, the bunch of different area codes. I have to pee again. Do you have to pee? Do you want to go before me? No. You have those stupid hanger things on that dress still. You're toxic? That's stressing me out. Do you leave those on? Yeah. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You can look at any of my dresses in my closet there and there. Chat, these things? Do you know what this is? As a male? This is so you can hang the dress up on a hanger. Uh -huh. And it just sticks out. I use Always. it. Always. I, I cut it them to, off. I use it to hang them. I hang my dresses like a crazy person. I hang my dresses like a pair in of half? hats in oh, half. Oh, that's weird. Across the hanger, I hang them in, in half. I will never not cut those things off. They're so annoying. I do have to pee, actually. Okay, go. Okay, you're, you're in charge. You. Can we have a five-minute segment where you guys hear the space heater? Because it's kind of cold. Yeah. You want to turn on? Five-minute segment. You guys hear the space heater. Swift is going to be afraid of it, unfortunately. It's okay. Casual. Nothing happens, Swift. It's 55 degrees in here, the space heater just told me. What? Yep, it's really cold. I'll be back. You were fast. It's so cold. It's freezing. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah, it's really cold. I hope the space heater will warm us up soon. <laughs> I told chat we're going to leave it on. Okay. Um, I was talking to them about Reddit and doing r slash nice guy. Oh, okay. And deciding um, who is a nice guy. Everybody on r slash nice guy is not a nice guy. Well, let's just see. Okay. Reddit r slash nice guys. self proclaimed nice guys are man-childs or douches who mistake being spineless and pathetic for being nice. Um... Oh, hi, kitty. Cheers. Meow. Meow. Okay. Meow. This, this title, posted by Underruse four hours ago on Reddit, says... Did he just meow? No. Or was that you? It was me. Oh. He said, my mom has been on one date with this guy. And the guy says, do you want to spend the night together at, at, at my place? And she replied, did you mean to send that to me? And he said, of course. She doesn't reply for five minutes. And he sends, so 
Shrugging emoji? I think so. She says, that's not something I do until I've known someone for a while. And he says, make an exception. I like you. I know we will go somewhere. We can go have drinks and crash at my place. I'll take you home in the morning. Ugh. <sighs> then we can be a little more. We... He waits. He waits 14 minutes and then sends, We only live once, so let's make the most out of it. Am I coming to get you? He waits 20 minutes and then sends, Question mark, question mark. He waits 15 more minutes and says, Are you ignoring me like before? She replies, I just got back into the dating world and I'm not making exceptions for anyone. He says, I see you are ignoring me because I see you're online. She says, online where? I'm in the middle of doing dishes, actually. He says, goodbye. She says, and my two youngest just went to back to North Carolina, so I've been busy with them. We rushed back here because their biological father had a stroke and is still in the hospital, just so you know. And then she said, goodbye then. He said, blocking you on everything and now on my text messages, so you won't be able to send me any messages. It says you're on plenty of fish right now. You're basic. Trash like the rest. That one's boring because it's so obvious. Like, that guy's a huge, massive red flag. I think she should have replied to him. <laughs> huge, massive. Have you ever had anybody do that? Been, like, like, known where you were that you weren't replying and been like, yo? No, I am a serial monogamous. Like, I date someone once and I fall in love. Oh. So I haven't really had a ton of time in the dating world. Um, but I I have had people be like, like, I don't reply to them. And they're like, you you were ugly anyway. And you're like, oh, damn. You found out. Like, I don't. One time in college I had a guy that memorized my entire class schedule because he liked me. Wow. And then um, one time... I was at work in the morning, and I was going to miss one of my classes because I was working, like, at my internship, and then he texted me, because he had my location, and he was like, aren't you going to be late to Ken? Ooh, hate that. Because he knew how far I was from campus, and that I was going to be late, and I was like- Wait, how did he have his location? I shared my You shared it with him? him. Yeah. You were just like, you were kind of close? Yeah. No, we were super close. Um, and he, he texted me completely, like, we hadn't talked at all that day, but he just saw where I was, and he knew how far I was from campus, and he was like, you're gonna be late to chem. And I texted him, and I was like, yeah, you're right. Wow. Yeah. What happened to him? Where is he now? He's watching right now. The last I talked to him, he was sending me front-facing Snapchats of him ODing. Oh, I remember this guy. Yeah. You've told me about him. He was like, essentially like, why don't you love me? He's fine now, chat. He didn't OD. Yeah, I mean, he might alive. have, but he got saved. No, 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 he's alive, he's alive. You he's can overdose and still live. He's for sure alive. But yeah, I had to call the cops in that city, and, and they basically told me, like, you have to wait until he wakes up in the morning, or until we can bust into his, his, you know, his living situation, his living space. And I was like, okay. So I had to wait, like, five hours that night because I wasn't sure if he stopped replying because he passed out because of all the drugs and alcohol or because he died. But then I found out in the morning he just passed out. He's fine. <laughs> He's fine physically, maybe not mentally. I think, um, I think that's so sad. I wonder what the first date was like with this lady in this r slash nice guys. Oh, I was gonna say, I thought you meant with me. I, no. The crazy thing about that whole story is that there never was a single date. He was a friend, right? Yeah, he was a friend. He was a friend. But, That's um, why he had your location. Right. But with that lady, yeah, no. I don't know. It was probably very normal, but he just hasn't been on any dates at all. And so he was like, and oh. he just wanted to get some. Yeah, he was like, this is the one. It is interesting how rude men can get when they just want some. True. I don't... I've never met any woman and that could happen i've never met any woman who like is rude just because she wants to get some isn't that interesting yeah i mean i've never had that i've never had the opportunity to have that experience i guess yeah i just have never heard stories i guess but some people in chat are saying they have 
chat acting like people are trying to just kill me. I'm sure you guys are great looking. Every single one of you. You're they exist. Fair? I believe they exist. I believe yeah, you. Yeah, fair enough. I just... I just think it's crazy how everybody seems to have a story about, like, a guy getting mad. True, 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 true. But. All right. Nice guy teaches female about the art of flirting. A female post on Twitter. Oh, and this is posted on r slash nice guy from user Pika Pika Gamer. Guy walked up to me when I was at lunch today with my mom and asked for my number. When I asked if I knew him, he said, And that's why you're alone, bitch, before walking out. Chivalry at its finest, folks. Which is just crazy. Like, when Wait, someone, like he egoed her? He, he, like, so, he walked up to her and said, What's your number? And she says, Oh, do, do I know you? Oh, yeah. And he said, Well, that's why you're alone, bitch. Which is crazy. And then a man replied to this and said, what did you expect? I mean, honestly, you want men to try, but you turn down nice guys when they come up to you. Was he supposed to say, hey, bitch, nice titch. Tits. Knowing females like you, that's, that probably would have worked. And then she replied, he was supposed to leave me the fuck alone, you creep. I saw somebody make a TikTok about that recently. And they were like... If I'm at the gym, just, like, doing my thing, don't approach me, trying to, whatever. And then this guy replied, and he was like, you're gonna reject every man that comes up to you and tries to make a move and say that you're attractive, and it's the nice men that always lose. It is the nice men that always lose. High pitch guy is the best. Yeah, some of you know who I'm talking about. I don't know. I mean... Have you ever been approached by a man in a public situation where you're not intending on, like, not a bar, not, not, like, going out, having a good time, like, in any normal public situation where you've been flattered or, like, intrigued by a man's approach? Okay, this is, this is an interesting thing about this, and I think this is important for all men to learn. The conversation starter is not, can I have your number? It never has been. And that, yeah, those I of you that any... think that that works, it just doesn't. Unless you're Channing Tatum. I still don't even think that works for Channing Tatum. I'd be scared of him, for sure. Yeah. If he wasn't He's famous and he approaches you, you're like, mm -mm. why don't you want my number? It, that's not how it works, guys. It, it, if it has worked for you, you're very, very lucky. But, like, I, I've genuinely only had one guy in my entire life ask for my number. Uh, like... What? Out of the blue. And it was on a train in Vegas, Including actually. Including bars. Yeah. What? I have resting bitch face. People are afraid of me. Okay. I don't mean to be this way. <laughs> okay. I had one guy... I was at this conference for work. And... Oh, God. I remember this. I actually... I had a boyfriend at the time. I'm at this conference for work in Vegas. This is years ago. I want to say, like, six years ago. And, um... I'm with a few people that I work with, and I get on this train, you guys know the train, the tram in Vegas, to go from the Southwest Hotel over to, like, the conference center, and so I get on the tram, and this guy gets on, he sits next to me, and he's, like, a tram operator or something, security, tram security, okay. and it's just super awkward, we don't talk about anything, and he says, oh, I like your dress, and I'm, I say, thank you so much, that's the conversation, that's it, uh, I get off the train, I go to the conference, I'm there for eight hours, mind you. We get on the train to go back to our hotel. I get on, it's normal. The next stop before our hotel, the doors are open. Last second, right before they close, he hops on again. And comes and he sits right next to me. And I'm like, oh my god. Like, his shift was definitely over at this point. And I just think he was watching the cameras, if I'm being 100% honest. He sits next to me. He, he makes small talk. He gives me no option to give me his number, if that makes sense. Because what happened was, and this is, he's like, he's like, oh, are you from town? No. And he's like, I w oh, I have some great restaurants you should go to. And, like, it's so hard because you're, I don't want to be rude. No one in the world wants to be rude, right? And I'm like, oh, what are they? And he's like, let me text them to you. And I say, no, it's okay. Just tell me I'll write them down. Ugh. And he's like, no, I need to think about it, so let me text them to you. What's your number? Ugh. 
and I have a boyfriend, and and it'd be so rude in that moment to say I have a boyfriend. He's just trying that's to not rude. Well, he's just that's... trying to send me restaurants. You know what's crazy about that excuse? What? You know what's, cr- dude? The amount of times that I've said I have a boyfriend, even when I don't have a boyfriend, is disgusting. What's even more disgusting about that is that a man, like a man's capability of like respecting some, like respecting a woman's like being uncomfortable, like, not wanting his advances, whatever, to then, to him expecting, or to him respecting some, another man's property. Yeah. Like, if you're like, I'm really uncomfortable with you talking to me right now, he's just gonna be like, you dumb But if you're like, I have a boyfriend, he's like, oh shit, sorry girl, you know, and he just like That's actually so true disgusting it's crazy Ugh. it works every time and i know like blah blah, blah feminist take blah, blah, blah. dude the amount of times i've done that in a bar you would not believe the amount of men that i've had that are platonic friends that have come up to me in bars and have been like that's my girl dude like why are you talking to her because i couldn't get out of the situation is depressing it well, really is what's really sad is at the time i like i love i loved my boyfriend i was with i loved him and whatever my co-workers knew that and my co-workers hated my boyfriend and they're just watching from the side like Pepe laughing to themselves, just, like, kind of giggling. And I'm like, well, one of you help me? Like, I'm staring I'm staring at them for help, like, frantically. None of them will help me. Mm. And I, uh, and I'm like, oh, and he's like, oh, it's, I just want to think about him and I'll text him to you. What's your number? And I was like, ugh, no. Like, and I keep saying no in the best way possible because I don't, because maybe he's not hidden. And maybe I'm, I'm obviously very naive. And this was years ago, so I think I've hardened off since then. And I just don't want to be rude. And maybe he's not hitting on me. Maybe he's genuinely trying to help. And so... I don't want to just assume he's hitting on me by saying, oh, I have a boyfriend. Because I don't want to be, I don't want to be a jerk. I just don't want to. And so he, um, he keeps saying like, oh, I'll just send him to you. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, I'll give him a fake number. I do that thing. So I'm like, okay. And he's right next to you? He's right next to me. Dude, you gotta wait until I you're know, leaving to I get a fake number. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, the number is 91 whatever, blah, 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 blah. I give him the number. And he's like, he's like, oh, let me, let me call you right now so you have mine. Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. Again, I had never been hit on a man. Or, <laughs> I've never been hit on by a man, and, like, before this. And I'm like, oh. And he calls it, and of course my phone doesn't ring. And I first act like it, like I go, oh, yeah, I got it. And he's like, it's still ringing. And I said, what? <laughs> oh my god, pain. And so I was like, okay. You know, and then I just give him my real number. I give up. And immediately, I, 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 and then he walks away and he leaves. And, like, the train stopped. We get off at our hotel. And I rip my coworkers a new one. I'm like, what is wrong with you guys? Like, none of you helped me. You saw I was in pain. Like, I was staring into their souls. And they were like, it was funny. And I was like, this is not funny. And so I, I call my boyfriend. And I'm like, this just happened. And I feel, like, so weird. I don't know what to say. And he's like, okay. Like, let me know if he texts you. You know? He does end up texting me. And he's like here's a few restaurants that are great. I'd love to take you to one. So then finally I said, oh, I have a boyfriend. I won't go with you. And then he's like, he's like, oh no, I'll take the whole group. And I was like, fuck off. Like, I was just like, I was like, oh yeah, we're super busy because this is a work thing. Five hours later, sends me a dick pic. And I was like, wow. Wild. Yeah. I've definitely done the my move with the fake number, though, is everything except the last digit. So if they're I ever, just made up numbers. If if <laughs> it wasn't not, even close. If they're, like, nearby me, it's like a, oh, it's the blah, 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 six, you know? But yeah. Then I just keep giving them the wrong last digit. I've done yeah. that, like, four times over in one night. I just didn't, I don't know, I didn't, um... I had never Sorry. experienced this. So hopefully this is good, you know, for any anybody in chat who ever gets, you know, hit on in a way that's uncomfortable. You've learned from my mistakes what you should do. Because it, it was so uncomfortable. It's so lame, but the best move, the best move. And I've tried it with men and women. I've been like, this is my girlfriend, back off, right? Like, with just, like, my actual friend, and they never take it seriously. It, you have to, men are so quick to respect another man's property. Like, you have to just be like, I got a boyfriend, even if you don't. For the record, she's she's doing quotations around property. Right. Shit. Like, audio Oh, viewers. audio listeners. Yeah. Property. Yeah. Quotations. Um, but any other any other response, like, oh, like, I'm kind of in a complicated situation. Oh, like, I'm trying to stay single right now. Like, oh, like, I'm not really looking for anything right now. Doesn't matter. It's crazy. It's, it's, it doesn't matter until you bring another man into it, and then they're like, oh, shit, sorry. 
Like, it's so weird. It's so whack that it's like that, but it really is. So, that's kind of crazy. But there you go. Yeah. I don't know. Have you ever asked someone for their number? No. Really? Not no I did once. it. I did it. I did it one time. And How'd it didn't you do turn it? Out. Well, I guess I didn't ask. I gave my number without them asking. I've never done that. Yeah, I did that. It was a guy who worked at a pizza shop. I've told the story before. And it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, turned out to be an awful experience. But I wrote my number on the pizza, like, receipt. And I, like, we left. I got the pizza. I was in the car with my friend. And I was like, oh, he's super cute. And she was like, give him your number. And I was like, oh, my God, I'll do it. You know, like, you feel wild. <laughs> And so I write my number on the receipt, and I could like call or text me or something, smiley face, and I go and I just walk back in. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I forgot your tip. Good line, good job, <laughs> cutie. You're you're genius. We're so proud of you. Um, and I slide him like I think five dollars, and then my receipt with my number on it. And he texted me, and we went on one date, and it was oh, so was, it was the was banana old. guy. Yeah, uh huh. He was old. He was old, and I didn't realize because it was like a dark pizza joint. Yeah, it was terrifying. I thought he was a college kid because it was a pizza joint by the college, and I was, like, 18 or whatever. Oof. I was like, this is going to be great. And he was uh, 28, and I was 18. No! And it was rough. I don't remember what age is, but no. it was somewhere around there. It was a big age gap, and I was like, it was, it was crazy. Oh, man. Yeah. I wonder where he is now. I don't think I've ever given my number to somebody. That was the only time. I think, I think sometimes be ballsy. I think it's, I think it is better to give your number then ask for a number because then it's on them and you you showed interest by giving your number. I think that is the better move. If a guy would be like, you know, buy like buys you a drink and then slides the res- like a a, some, a sticky note with a number or something. I think that's the way to do it instead of going up to someone and say, "Can I have your number?" So like back to the very beginning of that, like if that guy the way that guy hit on her, he could have saved his entire face if he walked by and said I saw you from across the room. You have beautiful eyes. Here's my phone number. Like, something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, saw you across the room. You're stunning. Phone number. My most recent one was downtown Austin. Mm -hmm. Guy came up to me, and he was like... (laughs) It was... We were all sitting at a table. It was girls' night. So, Uh we're all sitting at a table. Like, I'm at the head of the table. Everybody's there. She's famous. She's at the head of the table. I was just sitting there, coincidentally. Everybody's listening, and he comes up to me, and he goes... So what are you passionate about? What? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, at, that was the first line he said. He didn't introduce himself. He didn't say his name. He didn't say anything. He goes, so what are you passionate about? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know. I, I, I like animals, I guess. <laughs> you I mean, guess? Yeah, I was like, I yeah. like animals, I guess. Her life like, is dedicated I, to animals. No, I was like, I, I, I like birds. I don't know. And he's like, well, I ask you because I'm really, really passionate about art. And he starts talking about his artwork and, like, what he does for a living and whatever. <laughs> And I make eye contact with Kaylin, uh-huh. Corey, like, yeah, because she's sitting at the table. Second, I made eye contact with Kaylin. I start laughing. Like I just like was like mm-hmm. I like you broke. It was like I was I broke. Right. Yeah. I was trying so hard not to laugh because I was like, what the f- is this guy doing? I made eye contact with Kaylin. And I was like, <laughs> like, and I just lost it. And he was like, I'm trying to tell you about what I'm passionate about, and you're laughing. And I was like, dude. You're like, I'm a red flag. <laughs> no, I told him. I was like, yes, 100%, you should be upset. Like, I'm laughing at you. That's actually fucked up. I'm going to be honest. This is not the time or the place. Like, you're a little much right now. Like, I'm sitting with my yeah, friends. that's a good I, answer. I told him. I was good like, answer. look, like, your art is cool. I bet you're good at it. But this is too much. Like, yeah. it's just, it's funny because it's awkward. And yeah. he was like, I'm sorry. Like, I just, like, wanted to ask you what you were into. Like, I wanted to, like, make a connection. I was like, bro, it's just not the time. Like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. You're a table full of girls. Yeah, I was like, I don't know what to tell you. And so they all stood up. All the girls stood up. And they're like, Maya, we have to go. And they grab me. And they, and we run to another bar, like, giggling. And I was like, damn, I feel so bad for him. It was tough. But it also was important. Like, he needs it would yeah, be enabling every single thing he learns that lesson it would be enabling if we did not bully that man you don't understand <laughs> he was so cringy he was no. so cringy. he was trying to be so different he was like trying to like make this weird like connection whatever he, he was probably to hoping you were an art girl it was important it was yeah. important that that happened to him i think that was a big turning point in his life i think it's really good advice to put the ball in the other person's court and say here's my number and walk away do not wait. If they if they are interested, they will text you. Do not wait there and try to do Fair. whatever. Fair. I yeah. think that's good advice. Says the girl who's never been hit on. 
I don't understand that. I'm not approachable. You think that's why? You think because you just look angry? <laughs> I tell myself that's why. I don't I know. Think I have a I don't know if that's I why. I look not intimidating. Like, I look like I'm not going to do shit, I guess. I don't know. I... Yeah, I don't know. I tell myself that's why. I don't know. I, I think... I mean, I don't... That is why, because... I don't want to be negative. <laughs> so, I'm just going to say, I think that is why. I don't think it's just because I'm atrocious looking. I think I'm just why. I okay, think I'm just... certainly not why. I think I just have that face. That's like, don't look right at now. me. I don't. I'm scared you of You know what's clubbing. the difference between you and me? You have, like, a resting angry face. Mm -hmm. I have a resting sad face. So they're like, let me save you, yes. my queen. Yes. Oh my god, the amount of people that are like, are you okay? Like, hey, like, you wanna, like, you wanna talk? You wanna get out of here? You wanna, like... Are That's you, like, funny. Are you doing okay right now? It's like, yeah. I'm literally fine. Like, I'm, <laughs> like, I'm great. I'm this doing all right. Face. I don't... What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, I get people all the time saying, are you mad? And I'm like, never. I'm like, no, I got a cute little cat. I got a cute little puppy. They just cuddled up next to me. Audio listeners, I'm petting my cat and dog. <laughs> Audio listeners needed to know that because these guys deserve pets. There's no way an audio listener is still listening. No way. That's why we have to have our segments. For sure. And we'll call them beginning, middle, drunk. And so then everyone ah. listens to the drunk portion. And we only put the sponsors in the drunk first and, portion. No, that's a bad idea. Why? <laughs> because. But it gets the Oh, because it'd get the most views. But it'd also be the most confusing. We're a new podcast. We're working on it. We'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. If you guys We're like it. We're actually going to go or, on Meagle right or now. Or we will stop getting views and it'll end. Our podcast that? functions on views because we are broken brain streamers. 10.7? That's good. If we maintain 10k... 10.5. We will keep this podcast forever. So tell your friends. But if it goes below that, we're done. <laughs> we'll have a long talk with our attorneys. We're really going to go on Meagle tonight. Dude. Yes, we're going on Meagle. You know I need YouTube videos. I'm desperate. Did you know that's how I started streaming? What? No. What? No. How? What? No. Chat, say it with me. What? No. <laughs> I started streaming because after a very hard breakup of a five-year relationship I think that I thought I was going to be in my entire life, I was very lonely, so I went on Omegle. That's crazy. Isn't it? And I, I t my mom dies, I turned to streaming, you turned to Omegle. Yep. Wow. I met these two guys that were, like, very... I mean, they were really small streamers, but they played, like, Destiny or something. I don't know. Where are they now? Do you follow them? Yeah. Are you nice to them? Have you rated them? Yeah. Okay, oh, I haven't rated them, I don't You think, should rate them. They get a bunch of sh Oh. Um, I'm still cool with them, but, I mean, they're still, like, they're, like, five-year streamers, you know? Okay, yeah. But, um, I... Maybe ten. It, sorry. I don't know if that... Like, if I was you guys are doing great. <laughs> I, uh... You're doing great. I met them on Omegle one night, the two of them. Uh huh. And then they followed my Instagram. I followed their Instagram because I got to talking with them for a while. And then they saw that I was posting singing videos on Instagram. Uh huh. And they were like, "You should sing on Twitch." And I was like, "What's Twitch? Like, what homies?" Blah, blah, blah. For telling you that. Yeah. 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 And he got. He helped me. He. I had no idea what OBS was. The dude walked me through OBS. What a Had homie. me downloaded on my computer, set up all the software, told me to buy a Blue Yeti, this mic. That's actually a homie I bought move. this mic in champagne. I had my guitar. I sat on my bed. He, he, he walked me through OBS, got me a Twitch account. That's why my Twitch account is Maya Higa, because all of my other socials were, were Maya Higa. My, just my name. That's, I, he, I had no that's desire really to, like, cool. I had no desire to be a streamer. Like, I, I had no intentions on, like, having a username. It was just That guy my, should be a talent recruiter. I know. It was just, like, my social accounts. You know? Like, my personal socials. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I'll just make my name my name. And then I started streaming, and then I brought Bean out on stream one day, and then there happened to be an LSF Karma Farmer in there. Wow. And that's how I got on LSF. And that's how I met Miss. And that's how everything happened. And then it all happened. It all started with I remember I hated you. What? I hated you. Why? Because I was blowing I was up? friends with Halesby. Oh, no. <laughs> and she hated you, so I hated you. And I was like, this girl. Who's this girl? I have no problem with Halesby, for the record. I actually have no problem with Halesby either. It was just at the moment she had, like, a thing. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and so, of course, she would hate you, because she was like... That's tough. I probably shouldn't have said that. That's tough. Dab. Audio listeners, I dabbed again. 
Jesus, stop. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> this is empty. Uh, we're out of wine. Where's the other wine? We have a wine rack. Because Sad Dad made it for us. Oh, God. I could cry if I thought about how good of a person Sad Dad is. Dude, is it a speech I impediment? Want snacks. Or is it an accent what? That, you, that you say your R's like that? What? How? You say your R's really weird. What? Is that not- I mean, that's not just me that notices that, right? Ludwig said that too. What word? The, just the way that you say your R's. Ludwig has said this to me. And it made me really self-conscious. I went to you, speech you just therapy like, for really years. Like, I don't know how to What say is it. the word? The way that you do it! You say what like What is the, it? You say like the wor- word. Give me a word. Word. Give me- like, That's I the say word? I say word like word. Word. What's the uh, you, 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 It sounds like you have a Give bubble. me a new word. Give me a word. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> give me a. Give, what did I say that triggered Scooter. This? Scooter. There's no way you don't hear that. Scooter. Scooter. <laughs> what? Uh, stop. You're making me feel bad. Scooter. Give me a word. Scooter. Where did this start from? Where did this start? What word did you hear me that I said? No, I, I've always known this about <gasps> you. You say it, it's, My you know heart. who else does it, if this makes you feel any better? Uh-huh. Kourtney Kardashian. <gasps> she does the same thing with her R's. I'm, I'm a Kardashian. Kardashian. Do it. Shut up. I've caught myself doing it with my R's because you do it with your R's. Ludwig, okay, so there's one word that I know I say weird, and it's burger. That is definitely weird. And I know it's weird because I've gotten feed, I can't, if you say it, I cannot. Burger. Burger. Are you okay? I don't know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But I know I say it weird. You do say it weird. I know I say it weird because I've gotten feedback that I said it weird. And Ludwig started saying it weird. And I was like, why are you saying that weird? And he says I say it weird. And he started saying it like me. Burger. Burger. You're saying it like there's something caught in your throat. I don't mean to. I think it is a speech impediment and now I feel like a bitch. Well, I went to a speech therapist for many years and they didn't fix it. Red wine. Oh, Paso. Red wine. Paso Robles. At Central, Central Coast. Uh-oh, we're opening a second wine bottle. Uh-oh, we're supposed to have a moment. <laughs> What's the we, moment? We have moments on wine about it when we open a wine. You we, keep saying that like we have something we, established. This is our we, tradition. We Shut up. Tradition? This is our tradition. Talk about the wine. Tell them about it. This is Rabble Red Wine made in Paso Robles in 2019. Where's Paso Robles? Central Coast, California. I already said You're that. You're yelling at me. I'm literally not. Shut I just up. already said it. I wasn't listening. Neither was chat. Plus white plus ratio. You did not just do plus your bald. That was so cr- I'm literally not You're bald cringe. anymore. Oh my god. Cutie, shave Stop your head. Stop calling me cringe. Shave I would never shave my head. Why, really? I My self-confidence is zero out of ten. If I shaved my head, it would be negative twelve out of ten. You know what's crazy? I what? thought that would kind of shake my self-confidence, and it didn't really. You, like, you thought you'd be confident if you did it? No, I thought it would really f*** me up. I oh, thought I would just think I was didn't? ugly. But for whatever reason, and I know, I look back on, like, clips and photos and stuff of me in some of those phases of growing my hair back, and I was like, damn, that was really bad. I'm not but, gonna say who, but I know men that were like, Maya's hot bald. And if I, I could tell you who later, but not interesting. now. But, no, I mean, but the whole time, like, I can look back on those things and been like, Damn, like that looked really bad. But oh, this for is whatever, a wine. Ooh. For what, it is. But for Sour. whatever reason, at the time, I just never felt ugly because I was just like, "This is just how my hair is. Like, what am I gonna do?" You know. That's such a healthy way to think about it. I don't know. I just never thought about it. I want to wear wigs as is, and my hair looks like this. <laughs> I never, I never got into wigs. I was just like, "This is just what my hair is like, or not?" I will say, okay. So Bo Burnham said this best. <laughs> I love Bo Burnham, by the way. Who doesn't? I don't... If you don't, leave. Sorry. Audio listeners, I screamed. <laughs> She's cold, so she screamed. I love Bo Burnham, and he said it best where I don't have the right... I don't, actually don't have the right way to articulate this. He articulated it best, but I don't remember how he articulated it. Essentially, the idea that if you point out your flaws, it makes you feel better than when other people point them oh, out. for sure. It gives you sure. the security of it. For sure, for sure. And so one I thing, have small tits. Yeah, she does. So does Cutie. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, Yay! We're we saved. We did it. We're saved. saved. Um, but, like, 
like one thing I'll do when I start streaming, I'm really, really gross looking. I will start streaming and be like, hey, I'm so sorry. I look gross today. I'm self-aware. So then it doesn't hurt as bad when someone else points it out. Um, because one of the things that I find the most offensive, tell me if this isn't normal, is when people say that I am so full of myself because I am not. And so when people think that, I feel horrible. Cutie thinks she's a piece of shit. Yo, thank you for the flat. Yeah. yeah, cutie thinks that she sucks. I do. And it makes me feel bad when people think otherwise, because I don't want them to think that, because then I have this higher standard that I have to meet up to, and I just simply can't do it. And so it's very annoying, because then I had this old viewer, and this has stuck with me, and this happened many months ago, that even I think one of my mods currently would be upset that I brought this up. I had an old viewer... <sighs> post on my reddit one time that was like do you notice that cutie just fishes for compliments and it's like no i'm not fishing for compliments i'm trying to set the standard so everybody knows that i know what you know and this is how i am i do that with music yeah like i'll be like i know that i'm warming up or like i know that i sound bad right now yeah yeah but it's like not like Tell me I sound good. It's like, yeah, exactly. I, like I'm aware. <laughs> it makes me feel better. Like yeah. it makes me feel better to know that we know that we're on the same pa- we're on the same page if I set the precedent of yes, I look bad. So then people come in and they're like, "You look like shit." And I'm like, "Yeah, I know. I already said that." So, we're good. We're good. We're on the same page. Um, you don't know how I know that I'm drunk right now? How? I think it's like a sibling instinct. What? Mhm. But you just did, like, a hand motion, mm-hmm. and your finger, your, your hand went here, and I, I, like, instinctually wanted to bite your hand. Ah! That's yeah, that, been scary. That's really weird. We would have done that. That's really weird that I thought that. You could have. I used to bite my sister a lot. I loved biting her. Me too. She would just be sitting in the car, and I'd look at her, and I'd lean over and bite her thigh. I, I bought all, <laughs> I, I bit all my siblings and my sister, yeah. or my brothers and my sister. I remember, this is so weird, my sister, who was a straight-A, straight-laced, like, very Mormon person... Same. Well, minus the Mormon. Yeah. You're... Oh, I thought you said your yours is still Mormon. No, You no. said minus the Mormon. She's not Mormon. Mine is still very Mormon. <laughs> She's gay as f- Uh, the Mormons dating. wouldn't like that. <laughs> She's dating a black woman. <laughs> she can't be Mormon. Um, but my sister was in sixth grade and I was in fourth grade, I think. And my sister was, like, gonna get in a fight, which is crazy. Have you ever been in a fight, physically? No. Well, I had a boyfriend that beat me up, but I would never really fight back. Oh. And so I count that as, like, I've took a punch, but I've never given a real punch. Mm. And I kind of want to someday, but I also don't because I would hurt. It would hurt a lot. Your um, hand? I think, because then I'd also have to, like, I assume I would take some, too. Right. Um, anyway, that's a whole other thing. We don't need to get into that. Um, and, uh, I, um... What was it going? Oh, so my sister was going to get in a fight. And she was like, you don't want to fight me because my sister's a biter. And I remember this was outside of the outside of the oh school. My God. We were on the school grounds. My sister's like going to fight. My sister grabs me and pulls her next to me. And this was my proud moment to stand up for my sister. sister and I just sat there and I went. <laughs> and that was my moment. Audio listeners, I was chomping my teeth. And I felt so sick in that moment. I was like, yeah, I'm a biter. <laughs> And they didn't get in a fight because my sister had two and she only had one. That is so I weird. I was there. I saved my sister. In that fourth is, grade? That's sick though. That's so weird. In fourth grade, I'm the cool one. Okay, I'm in the fourth piranha. grade. Fair enough. In fourth grade, I'm sick. Actually, I realize looking back now, that's in, weird. Kids in, are f-ing weird, but. In second grade, I used to beat people up. I actually, I actually kind of feel bad about it. Really? Yeah. Why? Because in second grade, I used to. I used to go behind, I didn't beat them up, but, okay. like, I would go behind the school, and, like, I would, <laughs> I would chase boys around, and I would grab Isn't them by the- is that weird? Yeah, yeah. I would grab them by the back of the collar, and I would pull them to the ground. Oof. The most violent thing I ever did was in sixth grade to a boy who called me a- This was not <laughs> You're on a band trip, by the way. <laughs> I played the trumpet. Oh, my uh, cool. My boyfriend in, in eighth grade broke up with me while he was on a band trip. Really? Well, it wasn't a real band trip. We were just, our, we were going to perform at another elementary school. And we were on the bus on the way back and we were getting off the bus. And this kid named Christian, not fake name because f- Christian. Christian's getting off the, tr- the bus in front of me and he said something about me being a bitch or something. 
And I said, oh, yeah. And I took my trumpet case and I shoved it into his spine. Like, I swung up and hit him in the back. And I felt good about it. I really did. (laughs) Christian. He was so rude to me. Dude, in second grade, I used to chase boys around after school. And I would Mm -hmm. grab them by the back of the shirt and I would would pull them to the ground. You'd pull them, yeah. And my adult brain likes to think, they came back to the same spot every day. They would taunt me. They would, like, show up and they'd be like... They wanted to play. they, They were like... I'm here, you know, so yeah. it was, like, it wasn't, like, they were, like, cowering in the corner, and I just went yeah. and, like, found them and, like, terrorized them. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, they would show up, and they would run away from me, and I would chase them, and I would grab them, and I would pull them to the ground. And there were a couple times where I'd pull them to the ground onto concrete. I, like, these Ouch. boys got concussions from Ouch. me. 100% they got concussions. I like, wonder where bra- they are now. Like, brain damage at, at second grade. Yeah. But I think they're fine now. One of them messaged me when I blew up. Really? Yeah. I think about elementary school people, because I remember, I remember hearing from, like, my older brothers, because I was the youngest in my family, I remember them being like, oh yeah, I don't remember anyone I went to elementary school, and being in elementary school and, like, almost scattering, like, a drunk person that's like, I'm gonna remember this, 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 you know? Yeah. And so I remember being in elementary school, like, sixth grade, and I'm like, I'm gonna remember all of you. You are my queen, you are my queen, you are my queen. I don't remember any of them. I remember a kid named Eric. Actually, one of them? Damn it. I was gonna, I wish it was- I had a big crush on Trevor. I wish I it was the one. I had a big crush one. on Austin. I wish it was the one that messaged me when I blew up, because then I would feel fine about this. But mm-hmm. it's not. It was it was the other one, because there were two main ones that I would bully. the <laughs> The other one that did not message me when I grew up when I blew up, probably because he was traumatized by like me as a person and, mm-hmm. and what I did to him in second grade. <laughs> yeah, we don't blame him. <laughs> one time. I had a, because I had a crush on him, right? Which is, like, yeah. obviously why I would terrorize him. He came to my house in se- in the second grade for a play date. Mm-hmm. And I had to feed the farm, because I grew up on a farm. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I took him around with me to, like, feed all the animals. That's very cool. You had to have been the cool girl at that point. No, because why? I fed my pig. I had this pop pig, and she would eat too fast, and then she'd throw up. <laughs> And I took him with me to feed her, uh-huh. to feed Bella, uh-huh. and and we fed the pig, and then she threw up, and he was like, oh my god, like, this is so gross. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out pig throw up, not an average DJ act in second grade. He was, like, he was like, this is really gross, you do this every day? Like, ew, like, I hate oh this. And I was like, uh, no, like, she never does this, like, she... <laughs> She do- in she fact, did it, she does she it every did it day. Every day, and I was like, no, like she's not. The, she's just really sick. Like she's okay. Like I, it's just, like, it just went with it. And I like <laughs> normally she's a lady. In, okay, in seriousness, pig should not throw up. I mean, they don't. They don't have the Something digestive system to do that. She, her. she truly. I mean, she was fucked up because she was like a inbred miniature popular pig, right? Yeah. That's why she did that. But. It was very traumatic at the time because I wanted to be really cool, and he was like, ew, like, you're so gross because your pig throws up, and I was, like, traumatized. Do you know how I know I had issues starting at a very young age? How? In first grade. Okay. I've told this, I've told this story on stream before. We'd play this game called Don't Eat Santa, and (laughs) it, it was a bingo board, essentially, with a bunch of pictures of Santa, and what would happen is you would sit at this table, and... And one person would leave the room, and the rest of the group would pick a Santa, and that was their Santa. So it would be, like, this Santa down here. And so then they'd put M&Ms on top of each Santa, and the person who left the room would come back in, and they'd slowly eat the M&Ms, and you'd hope to eat the most amount of M&Ms before you choose the Santa that everyone else chose. And then everyone in the group would say, don't eat Santa! And that was the game. So you tried to eat all the M&Ms. It's kind of like Minesweeper, where you try to get all the ones without choosing the one that... Okay, everyone's looking. I'm really confused, I'm gonna be honest. (laughs) Okay, let's play Don't Eat Santa. Um, Guys, it makes sense. It's a grid with a bunch of Santas. You leave the room, the best of the group chooses one of the Santas. They put M&Ms on top of it. So M&Ms all over the grid. You come back in and you slowly eat the M&Ms until you choose the wrong M&M, which is on top of the Santa that the group chose. Okay. I can't explain this in a better way. Audio listeners, I can't explain this in a better way. Anyway... So I, I leave, it's my group, my crush, Austin. I was in love with him. I loved Austin. He was my Mr. first crush. Mr. Show. Mr. Show. <laughs> he turned out gay. And uh, it's really sad. Have Actually, you had one of those? No. Never. 
I kind of wish one of my exes turned out gay because it would make my life easier. I had one that turned out bi, and I'm pretty sure he only said that because he was gay and he, he felt too bad. Really? 100%. Yeah. He also, that's one of the ones that mess, well, that's a little much. <laughs> oh no. Anyway, Austin, I had this big, 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 big crush on him. He was my very first crush ever in my entire life. I don't know where he is now, but I know he's 5'2". Okay. It would have never worked out. Honestly, my ex was 5'4". You were also... I'm 5'2". Yeah. My I'm 5'8". My dad's 5'3". I'm huge. My mom's I'm a big girl. Um, so I have this big crush on Austin. Okay. We're, we, moment of fate. The stars have aligned. Austin and I are in the same don't eat Santa table. Okay. This is my time to shine, right? So I go out of the room. They choose a Santa. I come back, sit down. And I pick up an M&M. But I don't eat it because I don't want Austin to think I am fat. I'm in first grade. That's how we know something's wrong with me. So I take my M&Ms, I keep them in my hand, and in my brain I'm like, I don't want Austin to think I'm fat, plus I want to give, I'll give these M&Ms to Austin and he'll be so excited. That is so sad. Yeah, I know. It's really sad. That's how I know something's wrong with me. And so I go and I, I grab them all, and then eventually they're like, don't eat Santa, and I'm really embarrassed because I'm like, oh, they don't want me to eat him, and anyway, I lose, I don't get all the M&Ms, whatever. And, and I hold on to the M&Ms, and Austin is sitting next to me, I'm so nervous, right? And Austin goes, why didn't you eat the M&Ms? And so then, me, Sly, first grader, I said, I, I, was, I was saving them for you. And he looks at me, and I go like this, and I now have poop, like melted, melted chocolate in my hand, and he goes, ew, yuck! No! And my heart broke that day, and it's never recovered. Oh my god. Yeah. That is so embarrassing. It was a lot for me. The first embarrassing yeah. story, wait, first embarrassing story that I can think of was in second grade with a boy that I had a crush on. Fucking, don't have crushes. Don't have crushes. But <laughs> We say to our chat like they're in elementary school. <laughs> it was so dumb because it was, it was in second grade I had this, I had a crush on this boy and everybody in my class was going to come on a field trip to my house. Because I grew up on a farm, and, mm -hmm. and nobody that I... That's very cool. It was crazy. But you nobody... know what's crazy? Real pause. When I graduated kindergarten, you went through the... As you graduated, you'd say what you wanted to be when you grow up. Yeah. I said a farmer. Damn. Because my grandpa was a farmer, so I want to be a farmer like my grandpa. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Farmer. But, okay, so, no, everyone was going to come to my house because I grew up on a farm, and so everyone wanted to meet the animals. And... This is so embarrassing. I don't... This isn't even funny. Just tell but it. It's I, fine. I had a crush on him... And I was really excited about everybody coming Wait, to my house. Wait, is this the same boy that saw the pig no, throw? up? Okay, different boy. Okay. Um, he's really hot now, too, by the way, which kind of sucks. I would love to see what he looks like. Out of curiosity. Just pull him up. Let's take a meander. And I'll tell you if he's actually hot. He's probably not. It's probably Listen, just, like, I date my the history. hottest man on Twi- YouTube. <laughs> I'm curious. Who's this one? Um, but he was my crush, right? And so everybody was going to come to my house, and I was so excited. You can go through his feed. I was so excited about, like, people coming to my house, and I made this joke, and it was, what? This guy is a model. He's what hot, right? He's what? hot, right? Oh Admit it. Oh my god, okay. and he's fun. Look at that. I know! <laughs> Where is he now? Call him. I fucked Call it up. him. I fucked it up in second grade. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Call him. I made a joke and it was a flop. Yeah. I. <laughs> <laughs> he totally remembers it. He remembers it, and it, <laughs> it ruined my chances in second grade. What was the joke? <laughs> oh my God! Call him. Hello. I. I was. Do you still follow him? Yeah. Can I like an old picture? No. No. Do not. <laughs> do actually. Can I not. like an old picture so I know he knows you're looking? She took it away. I couldn't You're do it, chat. psycho. Chef. Wait, you dig? I'm sorry, we're yelling. Did you like a picture? I didn't. Okay, so... I'm Jim Halbert now. I don't trust you for shit. I didn't. She liked a picture. She commented. She said <laughs> Pepe laugh. <laughs> I commented Pepe laugh. <laughs> she actually has this... Like, 
Chat, mind you, my Instagram account is my Instagram account from middle school. Like we didn't Maya, have Instagram when I went to middle school. Thank Maya God. Maya underscore Higa is my account. Like I, he was one of my like fifty followers before like I grew my account She's as a business Move account. Move over. Move over. Anyway, my joke was, he he was putting on bug spray. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> to keep away the bugs. <laughs> and I went and I go. Because the field trip was coming up, and I wanted uh-huh. to play hard to get right. Of course. So I so I go. You think if I use that bug spray, I could keep all the boys away from my house? <laughs> it was good. It holds up. It holds up. It holds up. Don't worry. It holds up. It holds up. And he said, I don't get it. Actually, cooties don't exist. Um, females and males were meant to um, copulate together, oh and God. your cringe oh is what you said. I learned the F word in second grade, but I didn't use it in this situation, but I did learn it in second grade. He said, my friend said, who I also had a crush on. I was wild. You were a whore in second grade. I was huge. You were out there. I had a crush on Austin from first to sixth grade. I'm a loyal Wait, I made my best friend. Austin and I could have been something. I I don't know where he is now. I made my best friend in kindergarten because I got in a fight with her. (laughs) Who was my best friend? My my best friend was my... This is is the epitome of how I make friends. My brother's best friend's little sister. So I I was like automatically put on play dates with her and then she became my best friend. So, (laughs) typical. Typical me. My best friend in second grade, we all got clay the first day of second grade. I made a snowman, which is a very obvious creation because it's, a clay. it's three balls and you just stack them, right? Mm-hmm. It's very, whatever. But she made a snowman. <clears throat> so I was like, I need to confront her. Like, she copied me. So I, I hate copiers. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. So I go over it's and I was like. To this day, actually, I hate copiers. Dude. Yeah. We hate copiers. Yeah. No one better do an award show or we're calling them all copiers. That's all 10K of us were saying. That's f***ed up. QD so, already said she's doing it. I went over and I was like, yo, <laughs> Maya, second grade, approximately one foot tall. Yo, I saw your snowman. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, sorry. I saw that you made one and I wanted to make one, and I wanted to make one too. And I was like, honestly, that's, that's, that's fair. admirable yeah, to I was explain like, it in that way. That's fair. And then, yeah. and then we started building them. We were best friends from first grade or from kindergarten to fifth grade. And then we had a falling out because we made double Dutch teams, and she was on the opposing team. Uh oh. And we had team names and like team jerseys, and it became actual drama. Dude, I don't remember my best friend. Okay, for the record, Maya and I have a very different experience on the internet because she used normie name, normie everything. Right, she yeah. whatever. I'm cutie Cinderella. My name is Blair. Nobody who I went to high school with, who knows Blair, knows cutie Cinderella. I'm not kidding. I am Hannah Montana. If, like, I have Blair, like... Cannot relate. Blair's Instagram. If I posted on Blair's Instagram, yo, bitch, I'm famous, people would be really confused. Dude, everyone was, that has followed my Instagram since middle school... Yeah, and high, has, I had, has seen it. I had a thousand followers by the time I went on Omegle and met those guys that were like, you should go live. Like, all of the people that I met in college, the first couple years of college... Everybody from high school, everybody from middle school, all of Those. a sudden just saw my account go to, like, yeah. a couple hundred thousand. Yeah. And they're like, hello. I, I, they, yeah. It's so different. My, I'm going to per- pull up my personal, I'm going to pull up Blair's Instagram right now and tell you how many followers it has. Oh my god. And you're going to be, uh, you're, chat, you're going to be so confused. She posts on there for proof of life. That's I, it. The last time I posted on Blair's Instagram was 
It was actually my only post this entire year was because I was back home for Thanksgiving and I met up with one of my best friends. And that's it. That's all I posted in an entire year to prove that I'm still alive. I have 235 followers on my personal Instagram. On Blair's Instagram. That's pretty big time. Nobody, nobody knows. Nobody knows. And I think they would be really f confused because they'd be like, this girl was weird. Why do a hundred thousand people follow her? And I would say, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. Why did we get here? Oh, because that one guy DM'd you. What guy? The one. Um, when you got big, you said. From second grade. Oh. Uh. I've gotten a lot of DMs from people in high school. A lot of them, namely from, from guys that are on SoundCloud. <laughs> believe it or of not. Of course. No, I do believe that 100%. They're like, yo, like, I loved AP Lit with you sophomore year. Like, listen my SoundCloud. You want to check it out? Like, you want to get on a track? <laughs> I also always hated social media because I don't even have a Facebook. I don't have anything. I go on Facebook every day. What? Why? Currently. Why? Because I'm on a bunch of groups on Facebook. I'm in a, I'm in mushroom identification groups. I'm in falconer groups. I'm in bird. Uh, Maya, aid let's groups. go on a vacation, and go on a, a truffle hunt. They had that in Italy. You could go hunt for truffles. Don't f with me. I love mushroom okay. ID. <laughs> I asked you to go on a vacation. And you said don't. F with me. Because you're not being serious. I'm very passionate about. I will go. We just have to get Ludwig to fly with me and drop oh me off. Oh my god, you're such a. I can't fly an airplane, so I'm afraid. Cutie's actually afraid. I'm that actually, actually, that I actually have a phobia. Sucks. It actually yeah. really holds me back in that my really life. Sucks. And I know eventually when I'm 97 years old and on my deathbed, I will have regretted the amount I regretted? didn't go places. I can't even say it like you. <laughs> my <laughs> R's. They're weird. Stop. <laughs> I didn't say it weird. Weird. Stop. <laughs> Okay, why'd you say stop like that? I don't know. Stop. I'm saying normal words. Stop. 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 You're making me feel really weird right now. Weird. I talk normal. Stop. Stop. Why are you looking at are me you like okay? that? Are you what okay? Are you okay? Audio listeners, Maya's looking at me like I'm a crazy person. I anyway, a, so that I'm was gonna my, pick up my uh, cat because I love him. That was my story from second grade. I used to ride my horse by his house a couple times a week in hopes that he would be in his. <sighs> Olivia yard. Rodrigo's song. <laughs> I used to wait. How does her song go? I want to replace with horse. Forever and no, I drive alone past your no, street. No, I ride alone past your street. All right. No, I used to ride my horse past his house every couple weeks, um, or a couple times a week, hoping that he would be outside so that we could talk. He was never outside. That guy. But he did outside. have a. He had a chicken named Butterball. Is, this is the same guy I looked at. No. Oh. This is the guy that I used to beat up in second grade. I'm. I'm gonna Google my elementary school crush. That guy. You want to see his brother? You want to see? You want to see hot? Hold on. I'll look at my boyfriend if I want to see hot. Nice. Thank you. I genuinely think Ludwig is very attractive. Just so everyone knows. I don't know why I said that. You guys know. Look at this man. This is brother. See, he's in my Wait, sister's- Wait, who is this? That guy's brother. He he's in my a... sister's grade. Oh, he posted a picture with his girlfriend yeah. that said, you make me smile. They're very happily Aww, together. Oh, he's so sweet to his girlfriend. That makes him hot. Oh, that does, unfortunately. Like, as a person, not to me, relax, everybody. He's too old for me. He's my sister's age. But anyway, um. Oh, they are so cute. What was oh, I saying? Po only post- Oh, the only that guy from second grade, he had a chicken named Butterball. Oh, God, I'm really exposing myself. There's no way he's watching. It doesn't matter. But it, no way that, that is the actual name. It's not a made-up name of this chicken. We he had keep this chicken not named Butterball. made-up names, and we should. He had a chicken named Butterball. It was a... It was a I want to see something. It? I want to see if anybody that, like, from my high school follows she, you. She a barter? That I follow Ew. from my high school. Let's Ew, see. Let's I see. I'm on Blair's really Instagram like account. That. I really don't like that. Okay, my two. Anyway, he had this chicken. He was obsessed uh, with her, right? She was a really good layer, cool chicken, whatever. He only, I mean, he had, like, a chicken coop, and that was pretty was much it. She was a cool chicken. She was sick. 
she died, oh, right? And then we had ending. like a funeral and I made this really big deal out of having a funeral for Butterball. And this is really fucked up and very inconsistent, but my second grade brain always hoped that she would get out so that when I was riding by, I could find her. Like, I'd find her and on the road. save him? Yeah, and bring her back to him because I know how much he loved her. And that's a very, there's a very human example of how fucked up we are. Maya, I don't want to break this to you, but no one from my high school that I follow follows you. That sucks. That's really embarrassing. You're nobody. <laughs> nobody that was at the Christmas concert except for one person talked to me. That's my way. fault. That 100% is her fault. It is my I fault. I literally, I stood I'm there. I'm really sorry. I was like, I'm I must have the Instagram. biggest ego ever to think that all the people it is at my the fault. concert know who I am and like might want to talk to me or like say hey or look at me or this something. This is my fault. I sat there. This I sat there fault. behind it's Cutie while she was taking pictures it's with my everybody. Fault. It's my fault. One girl comes up to me at the very end of the event and she's like, hi, Cutie sent me an email and told me not to talk to you guys, but I just really, like, can I please take a picture? I love Alveus. Like, I love what you do. And I was like, huh? Like, sh okay, sure. If I would have known that everyone was down to take pictures with viewers, it would have been a different situation. Okay, so what happened, guys? All the viewers that came to the co Christmas concert were my viewers. And I did not want them to harass my friends for pictures in case they were trying to get out of there. Right. And I just didn't want... They didn't sign up. Maya did not show up to sign up for a meet and greet. And maybe... What I should have done, hindsight, 2020, I should have said, Hey, Maya, if you come to the concert, are you okay if viewers take pictures with you? And she would have been like, yeah, of course. To me, it was so obvious. I was just waiting for them to be like, hey. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. And I told my viewers to be very... But that's... I wish you told me that. Because I know. Because I was so ready for everyone to be like, Hey, like, Maya, what's up? Whatever. I was sitting there on a stool. Just sitting there. And none of, like, they all didn't look at me because they got this email and they were trying not to be, like, creepy viewers. I told people not to bother. People. Yeah! And I was like, damn, like, they did it, not it like It made me. sense in my brain because I figured none of these people, all these people who showed up were doing a favor to me. And I didn't want them to have to be, like, uh, bogged down by viewers trying to take selfies. Oh my god. And so instead, every single person that came was offended. And everyone in chat that said that's kind of fucked, cutie, is crazy because where said I- that? Who said uh, that? Someone did. Where I got this from was because Ludwig had his kickball event with a lot of viewers and it was kind of public and some people found it and they were waiting outside to take selfies and we had security send them away mm -hmm. because none of these people signed up for a meet and greet. They all signed up to play kickball. So in my brain, the lesson I learned there was nobody signed up for a meet and greet. They signed up for a little concert, a little cozy concert where they could come show up and leave. And so yeah. I felt really, really bad mm -hmm bogging people down like hey Maya do you want to take a picture with like making her feel like a zoo animal or whatever because she didn't sign up for that and so I specifically asked people to be extra courteous when it came to like taking selfies and stuff like that and they really were for the most part but what happened then it was Maya and Austin and Myth and everyone else who attended was like no one wanted a picture with me it's and so I was like oh my god I feel like an idiot well it wasn't like it wasn't was, like a big ego, like, nobody, nobody talking. It was like, I, really I felt was... like they were, like, upset. Like, I thought they were upset about something, because I would be like... They probably wanted a picture with you, and that's yeah, what they were upset because about. because I was like, hey, like, thanks for coming, what's up? And they would just be like, oh, hi. Oh. And, like, run away. And I was like, mm, what? Like, what happened? Okay, what, what I, I learned is, next time, I will say to everyone attending, hey, are you okay with doing a meet and greet afterwards? If not, let me know, blah, blah, blah. And I will send an email that says, hey, guys, you can take as many pictures as you want with XXX. XX, don't take a picture with XXXXX. Yeah. That's what I should have done, and now I know that. But every single one of these events, I've learned something. True. So. Fair. So I've learned something. Communication is key, and um, I, yeah, I know everyone there wanted a picture with every single person, too. I know that. Because they were so, like, they were so excited to see certain people. And, like, even people, like, people that knew you weren't singing, I heard them when they walked in the room. Ew! Oh my god, really? Isn't that weird? Yeah. That's so weird. I would hear them walk by me, because I, I, I made sure to say hi to everybody that came to the concert, because, you know, they were strictly, like, they have to be a part of my Discord to get an invite, so I know they watch me, and, um, so yeah, I'd hear them walk in, they'd be, oh my god, that's Lily, or oh my god, that's Leslie, and they'd get so excited, and I, I felt, oh my god. Anyway. That's so strange. I learn every single time, and that's what's the cool Dude, thing about these events. one of them scared me. Why? Because I forgot that viewers were showing up, mm -hmm. and I got there a little bit early, and I was right. you're probably here, so what up, you're fine. But um, I, 
I, th- I was early to the event. Like, everyone was just, like, setting up. The right, because you can't, you even said to me, you're like, I'll come help. And I was like... Yeah, I was like... Me with my brain cut off, just... I was, was like, like... I was like, I don't know what you can do. You, like, use my hands, like, where can I... Can I move stuff? Yeah. Can I, whatever. And everybody was just like, no, you're good. Mm-hmm. Like, just sit, just relax. <laughs> I didn't want to relax, so... So I was going to walk to a CVS to get, like, a bag of candy or some shit. Something useless. Um, <laughs> because I just wanted to, like, That's walk funny. and, like, be... Yeah. Whatever, be Feel useful. useful, yeah. So... I went out of the building and I started walking to the walking to the CVS and this this guy comes up behind me and he's like, and he was like hi like my and I was like what like who, like, who are you because <laughs> like, I forgot the viewers were gonna be there because they were all waiting to get in I forgot that they were at the building and I just like I was completely like normie brain like going to the Seven yeah. Eleven like getting it whatever just completely in my normie brain. Um, and he was, and he was so nice. Like, it wasn't of creepy course. at all. It wasn't creepy at all. Yeah. But it, it, I was, like, so confused at the time. I was, like, Everyone that showed up Hello? was very, very sweet. Oh, they were so nice. Yeah. There was nothing weird, which is crazy, because I was sure I was gonna get stabbed. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't tell you this before the concert, because I didn't want to freak you out, but I was- I was sure I was gonna dude, get stabbed, too, I was actually. so nervous about being there. No, I was- I was, like, there are so many opportunities here for somebody you'd be, to You can through. see, if you watch- if you watch the beginning- Okay, but what you might have not- I cannot believe that you streamed the entry. Because that, like, the People could have figured it out, yeah. Dude, the checkpoint of people coming in and them knowing that it was live, like, so many things could have gone wrong. I was so- I had two security guards posted outside. Okay, Still. this is a lot of stuff people don't know, is I am a very anxious person. I literally, I am diagnosed OCD. I think through every situation, it's very, I have issues. You just f***ed up. I'm f***ed up. You don't want to know the beginning of it. No one even, like, Maya maybe knows the surface of it. No one knows how really fucked up this brain is. But I, uh, the cool thing about this event. <clears throat> Cutie refused people to come to the event because they had timeouts in her chat. Yeah, if you were ever timed out in my chat, you didn't come to the event. Nothing. You didn't come. If you ever had a timeout, you were not. You did not get invited. Um, <laughs> she was not. I, I wasn't around. If you did not. F- so what happened? This is how this event worked. I wanted viewers to come. I wanted to give something back to my community in any way that I could. But I didn't want people traveling. So I wanted to be only California based. You had to fill out a form, submit your California ID, or you could not come. Submit your Vax card, or you could not come. Then. Every single person went through a background check, a legal background check. If you even had a misdemeanor, out. If you, like, if anything came up even kind of weird, out. Then I had a mod go through your entire chat logs to see if you ever said anything weird. And if you (laughs) did, out. Everybody's channel. (laughs) That was the... Dude, that's There is one person that I almost didn't invite because they were mostly a Ludwig viewer. And, like, they subbed to me and never talked to my chat, but was mostly a Ludwig viewer. And part of me thinks that maybe I shouldn't invite them because at the end of the show, they sat there talking to Ludwig for, like, forever. And I was like, shh. I, like, this was not Ludwig's concert. Like, you know, I don't, you know, I don't want, you know, I don't want him to be bothered. Of course, like, he's my boyfriend. He, he would do anything for me, but I don't want him to be bogged down. Like, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, so if you did not pass the back, like, the chat logs, you were out. And there were quite a few people that just didn't pass. Some of the people that applied to come didn't even follow me. And I was like, yeah, you're out. Like, that's just sus. Yeah. They did not get the address to the building until two hours before the event. Respect. Honestly, Because I just wanted to keep it as safe as possible. That's how I would do it, too. You were not allowed to bring bags in. Yep. Every single person got metal Metal detected. Yeah. Yeah. So it was as safe as humanly possible. The address was not out there. It was, it was very, 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 very safe. Um... I and even at scared. the beginning, I was very uncomfortable. But you a could bunch see of me, them, I was like, so many of them were women. Yeah. I was shocked. Yeah, it was so very cool. Many women. It was very cool. And I were, think fifty like, percent of the audience was women. Dude, like normal chicks too. Like, like they were very that sweet. I could like hang out with. Yeah. I was like, damn, that's crazy. I'm proud of myself. Think of the five. Yeah. I did not do a good job singing, but I did a great job putting together an event. And I'm fine with that. You did do a good job. Sam. I did an okay job. I was so pitchy. I watched back a video that my editor put on Cutie Cinderella Clips, and it was me and Ludwig singing Sant or Baby It's Cold Outside. That was good. And at the end, I couldn't hear the song, and so I said, Ah, oh, but it's cold out. And you have to like yell, like I loud would, sing. Everybody was yelling though. So it was so off pitch. You couldn't hear it in the audience. Oh, it was painful. Everybody was yelling. It was painful on stream, but I feel I don't even feel bad about it. I don't feel bad. I I worked a long day. It was a great stream. 
It was a great event. Let's go. Fuck it. I know, that's the first time in my life I've ever said that. It's actually. so crazy hearing Cutie talk like I've that. I've never said that. You guys don't understand. I end stream and I immediately say everything that was wrong with it. Oh my god. Because I want to fix it. I'm a fixer. Dude, that was like me on the Halloween event. Halloween event, I literally, I ended stream, I immediately went to my car and just cried for like an hour and a half. That was shit camp. I cried my eyes out. I yeah. cried my eyes Everyone else out to, went to the club to celebrate and I sobbed. Right, same. Yeah. And it's crazy because all the viewers look at it and they're like, that was so That good. was great, like, yeah. Look at all the viewers, like, look at all the streamers, look at all the viewers, what a, like, such a cool event, we did it. And, like, the person who leads it just sits there and cries, because they're like, this was wrong, this was yeah. bad, this was bad, it's so wild. Well, my problem was, is, I should have had more of a break on the last day of shit camp. I went, they went kickball, and they were all worn out, and then I said, here's the finale stream, and every single person is sitting there, like, <sighs> yeah. And I, so then I ended stream, and I was like, everyone was asleep, and it was my stream, and I tried so hard, and I so, dude. But I learned next time, the last yeah. stream, there needs to be more of a break and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to do more of them. For people who don't know, is I I have the biggest FOMO in the world. You can ask anyone who lives in Texas. True. That whenever there's an event, I'm sitting at home crying. Cutie's the most Texas ever. And she's just stuck in LA. I'm stuck in LA because it's I'm in so love with a man. It's so frustrating. I know. I love him so much, though. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. For anyone who ever questions that... <laughs> I'm in fucking LA when I should be in Austin. Like, I, I love this man. I love True. him very much. And so, I, you know, I'm stuck in LA and I'm watching these events and da, da da And finally I had this epiphany where I was like, I've always been very insecure about, you know, my friends here and who, like, will say yes and blah, blah, blah. And finally I was like, guys, like, well, I was at dinner with everybody and they were saying, why don't we do more events? Why don't we do more casual things together? And I, I like, lit up and I was like, oh, my God. Please. You know how, like, OTK does these great events and they're all based in Texas? And, you know, I'm not in Texas. I don't have my friends near me. And they're saying this stuff. And I was I, I started, like, fluttering. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I get so excited. And so we're doing it. We're doing it in L.A. We're doing it. In LA. We have XQC. We have Adept. We have Hassan. We have Will. We have Myth. We have Lud. And myself. And that is the main group, which is pretty f great. And we're going to do events together. And it's going to be great. We don't need an org. We just have us. And that's going to be amazing. So our first one is on Tuesday. And it's going to be on Hassan's stream. And we're just going to rotate whose stream it's on. We're doing gingerbread houses. Maya's going to be there. Amaranth's going to come. I What? Yeah. And she's tell flying you in here? No, she's in town for other reasons. What the fuck? And so she's just going to I moved stop my by. flight so that I could be on that stream. Yeah. So we're going to start doing it like once or twice a month. And I'm just going to plan stuff and tell people dates. And that's just what we're going to do. Because it makes me happy to be around people I care about, and so, yeah. That's pretty big time. Yeah, I'm very excited about it, and, because I, I mean, Maya would know, I think I can, I can say it now, because I'm in contract or whatever, but TSM was my dream team for a very long time. I love TSM, I'm very passionate about TSM, but I sat there struggling for a very long time, making sure it was the right choice, because all of my friends are on other orgs, and I was, I was very stressed. I'm like, am I making the right choice? And I think, finally, I'm, I said to myself, I love TSM, and I can still do cool things outside of it without being on another org with the people that are around me, and so it feels very good to, like, finally have that breath of fresh air where I'm like, okay, I can do this, but hopefully people don't just look forward to my events, and hopefully they'll also watch my solo streams, because they're I mean, different, but... It bleeds over. It'll bleed over. It's tough, because I, yeah, events are important, and collabs are important, and I wish they weren't. I, the thing is, I genuinely love events. I think my long-term goal, like, you know, five, ten, okay, maybe not five years. You guys will still watch me in five years, right? Ten years from now when I'm old and, like, you know, people don't want to watch a, f I don't want to know how old I'll be in ten years. We don't need to think about it. Twenty-five. <laughs> Nobody wants to watch a twenty-five-year-old. Huh? Yeah, uh-huh. Oh, I'm Jesus. fifteen. I'm, I'm great. I look great. Nobody wants to watch, you know, whatever. Did you just take my wine away from me? Yes. Weird. Um... I will, I want to, like, have, like, I want to plan events for streamers that's just turnkey, where they just pay me, and I say, okay, show up, do your you cookie decorating insane. stream. Why? I could never put <laughs> my time and effort into an event and then rely on streamers to execute it. I would be furious. I mean, they'd pay me for it. I'd be furious every time. Doesn't matter. I'd be like, you're gonna waste my time? Go fuck yourself. Like, I, yeah. I hate when people waste my time. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Drives me insane. Like, I, I, I don't know how you do it. I really don't. But respect. 
Um, did I say something that I had to take my wine away? Did I say something offensive? Yeah, you said you were 15. Stupid. Oh, okay. Oh, I get it. That's why I can't drink. Jesus 15. Christ. Um, fuck, what were we talking about before that? <laughs> I don't know. I can't believe you haven't cut these off yet. It's driving me insane. Stop! Cut them off! I'm gonna... There, see, that's what I'm talking about. No, I'm not they gonna... They gotta go. No, I'm gonna go put them on hangry. They gotta go. They My gotta kitty go. will play with them, Dursy. He's sleeping. He's, oh, oh, you went awake. This? You went. Oh my God, he's alive. <laughs> you went. <laughs> he loves strings. He'll do anything for string. Oh what a what a simple. Brain. He's a simple little boy. He just loves strings. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Durs. Yeah. String. <laughs> you got it. Just up from a nap, automatically for a string. Oh my God. I love this cat. Um, we were, we were talking. About, oh, oh, we were talking about collabs and shit. dude. I wish I never had to do collabs. The only really, people, I love them. No, the only people I feel comfortable with on stream, genuinely comfortable. You, slick, S fan. Really, that's so interesting. Dude, I don't know why. Everybody else, I'm just like, no, like I'll do collabs with other people, right? Of course, but like, those are the only ones that don't feel forced at all. I. I can be cameraman for any stream. Same. I can feel I feel very comfortable cameraman. I don't I do not feel comfortable somewhere else. Cuz I don't know how to act. Compared right. to cameraman, I just but have to even, be quiet. I mean, me and Slick every week, we have a guest every week. And it stresses me out every really? time. Every time. I feel so much pressure to like include them, make them funny, like make like get them in on the inside jokes, help them farm, like That's make very it a nice good stream. It's dude it's so much pressure, and so that's why I don't want guests here. It yeah. is so much pressure, especially because so by the time they get here, they'll and be so God, will be drunk. God forbid, I fly all the way to fucking California to have a guest that's dead air. Yeah, I'd be so mad. I mean, the biggest goal about Maya flying to California for this podcast is to make it worthwhile, and so we're we've got to figure out how to make it worthwhile. I think it'll take a bit for us to figure out how. But if we find a sponsor... It's already, no, and, it's already good. Okay, as long as you think it's worthwhile. I get very self-conscious about you thinking it's worthwhile. It is worthwhile. Because I'm trying to put my she shed into it's, it. It's stressful when the view... I mean, this is only the second time. It's stressful because the view count is going to fall from the first one. It is count. definitely going to fall. Obviously. I mean, even but, if you think of Housewives, Housewives was like at 30k. For sure. And then yeah. it was sitting at like but, 7. But it's still like... I think it's important to like diversify content, you know? I think people like it. Like, I think they think it's interesting. I think it's something to look forward to, and I think that makes it work. A lot out. of this stream has just been us being self-conscious. Really? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, sorry, audio listeners, but we are currently self-conscious. <laughs> I do I do think it's important, though. I think it... Audio listeners, this is a quiet moment. We're watching Durs My Cat attempt to get on the coffee table. He can't do it. He gave up. <laughs> He's thinking about it, he though. He got scared. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> I love this guy. You can do it. You can do it. Do you want to, Do you want me to help you? Look, an ornament. I'll help you. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, I think it's because it's clear. He thinks it's oh. see-through. That's oh, honestly do not smell fair. Wine. Yeah, that's what it was. Because it's a glass table, so he doesn't know that he can stand on it. I love this kitty. So cute. How many hours are we at? Uh, over three. What? It's nine. Oh my god, we're at four. Yeah. <laughs> over four all right let's wrap it up chat that's the podcast <laughs> and that's this week's episode of wine about it we came in with actually zero preparation cutie and i like without exaggeration we've talked like 15 minutes total today i've been at her house all day i avoided talking to you on purpose for this past month. what <laughs> on, on this pa like especially today i didn't want to bring up anything i wanted to talk to you on the podcast <laughs> Because then it would just be repeating myself. So I purposely... <laughs> okay, like, you shouldn't do all that. I'm sorry, well, it's psychopathic, but I have to do it. I couldn't tell you about Girls' Night. Fair enough. Because I had to tell you about it. I couldn't tell you about Brooke's mom. By the way, Brooke's mom, if you're still watching, Mama AB, I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. It's a fake candle, don't worry. It's fake. Yeah, all the candles are fake. He's not going to catch on He's not going to hurt fire. himself. Um, nah, I've just been chilling all day. But, uh, today's podcast was very not structured. I hope that it was fine, because we were just... Shooting all, shit. We were just all over the place. But I do think that that's where this podcast should be. Yeah. 
Um, I think that that's the... Literally, our description, they asked me for a description when we put it on Spotify and Apple Music. They were like, what's your description of your podcast? And I said, a drunk phone call between Cutie and Maya that you're invited to listen to. That is our bio. That is the bio of our podcast. Yeah. So I hope you enjoy it. Um... Yeah, it's a mess. But if you're here, thank you so much. Thank you for coming back. Um... This if will happen here, monthly. The second Sunday here, of every month. Second Sunday of every month. Let's go. Second Sunday of every month, I'm flying to LA in this studio. Cutie and I are doing a podcast. I dabbed again. Big time. Audio listeners. God, you're so cringe. Um, <laughs> second Sunday of every month. I have to pee um, so bad. I do think we should make it later. I'm we, d- you know I'm down. Literally the only reason I ever say 5 p.m. CT is because I think, for some reason in my brain, I'm like, it'll be easier for people to remember, because it's like, it's 5 p.m. somewhere, but that's really dumb. Like, we should probably start at, like, 6 or 7. But then again, EU is f***ed that way, but EU is f***ed at 5 p.m. CT no anyway. matter where they are. Right. EU, you're f***ed. Wait, what time should we start? For PS- EU frogs, for, for PST. Am. No. <laughs> what time should we start for PST? I'm looking at chat right now. 6... Later, six, eight, six, seven. I mean, seven. if we're looking at when people get offline, we need to start at seven. Because that's nine CT. That is my sweet part. Nine CT. That is when Hassan's offline, ten. that is when Lud's offline, that's when Miz is offline, and I'm zooming. Sad that we have to think of those things, but I do, so. Alright, let's do 7 p.m. PSG then. Okay. Alright, That means you could always it. fly in day of, too, because that's a late flight, you know? I mean, you could come in. If there's special events, you can come in early, obviously. Okay, wine about it. Second Sunday of every month, 7 p.m. PST, which is 9 p.m. CT, which is 10 p.m. Eastern. Perfect. You can catch it live on twitch.tv slash Maya. And then you can catch wine about its YouTube videos on youtube.com slash cutiecinderella. 